somebody get me a reader, we got a bleeder. I'm running things in Egypt like Zafna Pernita. This ain't self-determination like Kuji Chagalia. This is Edomite, he's at the bottom of my sneak. This is bigger than the feature. This weapon's in the hands of God. We are the creatures, amazing. We save it. The baby boy done turned into a warlord. A hundred prophets hopping out the four doors. Undefeated, we don't even watch the scoreboard. They seen us coming, and all you heard was, oh, Lord. If you were scared to fight, then what you go for? Deacon Lava be the hammer, I don't know, Thor. You can scream all your doctrines and your folklores. At the top of your lungs to your throat sore. This word too heavy, it done broke jaws. We at the door, let us sin like a broke law. Big up, thank the Lord, he done sent Savior. Yeah. Uh. The Lord, he done sent the Savior. All praise to the Creator. Savior. Yeah. It's the album. Hey, yo, 12, we did it, man. We did it. All praise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They want us to fail. But what? But we prevail. Check, 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 check. High in Christ, bless Israel. Salute down, face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets. 
trumpets down. The book of Psalms, chapter 20, verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, the God of our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we come to in the name of you, son Jesus Christ, Father God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for the unity of the brotherhood. We thank you, Father God, for providing a congregation where we can come to fellowship in the spirit of you, Son Jesus the Christ. We give you all praise of glory, Father God, on your Sabbath day. Father God, don't forget the promise you made to our forefathers, Abraham and Jacob. Isaac, Father God, have mercy. Have mercy on you people in these last days, Father God. We pray for the destruction of our enemies, those who hate us, Father God. We pray for the destruction of ADL, destruction of SPLC, APAC, Israel Project, Israel Secret Intelligence, Konoi Mission, IFCJ, we pray for their destruction, Lord. Whatever you plan, Father God, for you people, Lord, do not let it come to pass. We curse all of them, Father God, in the spirit of you, Son Jesus the Christ. Destroy them, Lord, that they may never rise up again. Father God, don't forget. Never forget what they've done to you people, Father God, to our history. Don't forget, Father God, what they're doing to the Levi right now, what they're doing in Africa right now, what they're doing here right now, Father God. They still have their, their foot on your people's neck, Father God, in 2024. Don't forget, Father God, the promise, Father God. You say when we come back, when we repent, you're going to fight for us. Father God, this is the day to fight for you people. Father God, you cannot lie. All you promise, Father God, all your word, and destroy your enemies. The same way they are enemies, Father God. We pray for those who are sick in the midst of us. May you heal them swiftly and quickly. Father God, a lot of us is struggle financially. Don't forget the promise, Lord. Don't forget the promise. Have mercy. Have mercy on your people. Let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 We also pray, Father God, you bless our food and strong drink. It's in the name of you, Son Jesus Christ. Give you all praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Men Israel, sons of God. Patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Oh, sorry, Christ, bless. Salute. Down, face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Oh, sorry, Christ, bless. Yeah. Oh, praise God. Ah. Oh, praise, oh, praise. We the building! Oh, please. And don't talk about the part in my hair. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters, you know what time it is. Get your Bible ready, your pen, your pencil, your notebook. Okay, what's going on over there, brothers? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Brothers, take some good notes so you may right. come back and revisit your notes. Sisters too, take some good notes.
Illish, am I right? Bishop, you ready? I don't know. Simeon, am I right? All right, all praise. All right, all praise. All praise. How are your sisters doing this Sabbath day? Yeah. Brothers, how are you doing? Good. These are my extra magnifying glasses. Don't talk about me. I know these people are talking about me anyway. It's all right. Today's lesson, put it on the screen, uh -huh. is Putin opens Russia's vault. Yeah. We're going to talk about that today. Now, I'm going to lay the foundation for the class. We're going to open up. Give me Wikipedia first. The first clip is Wikipedia. Uh, who's reading for me? Oh, Yuri. Officer Yuri? Yes, sir. You got me? Yes, sir. Read me. Read. Modern terminology. See also, Scythio-Siberian world. The Scythians were part of the wider Scythio-Siberian world, stretching across the Eurasian steppes of Kazakhstan, the Russian steppes of the Siberian, Ural, Volga, and southern regions, and eastern Ukraine. What I want y'all to see is that the Scythians were in Kazakhstan, and what I want to focus on is where it says the Russian steeps of the Siberian. All right, everybody got that? Write that down. Write it down. It's very important. Put the map up. Put the map up. Y'all see Scythia, right? And you see the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Right between those, you got the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Right, Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. You got Scythia right there up top. Y'all see it? Does everybody, everybody see it, right? Yes, sir. All right. Give me the, ne the next uh, book. Redivivus. Read that for us, Yuri. Zoom in. Yep. Not so big, so, yeah. Israel Redivivus. Being a history of the tribes of Israel, distinct from that of Judah, from the times when the biblical accounts of them came to an end. Raise it up. Now I just want y'all to see, see what year it was pub created? Created date, 1905. 1905. Raise it up. Raise it up. Who wrote it? Frederick Charles Danvers. Creator, Frederick Charles Danvers, 1833 to 1906. Raise it up. I want you to see the contributing institution. Come on, you Harvard right? University. Harvard University. So now we're going to go inside the book. Give me the book cover. Yep. That's the book. I got it at home. That is the book. Published 1905. Let's go inside the first highlighted area at the top, please. Zoom in on that. It Zoom in. Can you make it bigger? Yeah. It must be remembered that the descendants of Abraham did change their names on more than one occasion before their final captivity. At first, their progenitor was a Chaldean. As a race, they were originally called Hebrews. Meaning, remember, Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. As Hebrews, they went down into Egypt, and there they were later on called the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And afterwards, Israel and Israelites. Now raise it up. Watch this. Raise it up. Next highlighted section right there. With regard to the Israelites, however, it must be remembered that each tribe was divided into different families or sub-tribes, even as there were at a later date many <laughs> tribes bearing different names who were collectively known to the Greeks as Scythians. You see what they call some of the Israelites? Scythians. Get Colossians 3 and 11. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 11. I know it's one of those small verses we will overlook, but watch this. Colossians, chapter 3, verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. So when Paul was saying Christ is in all he was letting us know that Israel went by all those various names. Read that again. Read the verse above and go down. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, mm -hmm. where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Right, neither Greek, Greek nor Jew. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. Now these are all terms that Israel was called. Go ahead. Barbarian. Barbarian. Scythian. Scythian because we were in that region of Russia. Go ahead. Bond nor free, uh -huh. but Christ is all and in all. So don't let a Christian tell you, oh, see the Scythians. Right. That, the Scythians were Israelites that dwelt in Scythia. 
a remnant of this. Everybody understand that? All right. Give me the video with Putin now. Give me the video of Putin. Now, I don't know what Putin said. Russia's President Putin makes a shocking announcement. We're going to play the video. Go ahead, play that. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today, today, we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution. A moment that redefines Todorze, not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brotherhood. This black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide us. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of black Jesus, a nation that stands for justice, equality, and love for all, regardless of race or creed. Well, all righty then. All righty then. Now, I'll say this about that. I don't know. I don't speak Russian. So I don't know if, if that's what he actually said. But regardless if he said it or not, Right. We've been proving that our people been ruling Russia for years. So this ain't new for us. So, uh, Officer Alicia, I want the first book. Who's controlling? Give me the first book. So the vault that they claim uh, he opened was never closed. The vault was never closed. I'm going to show you. This is a book I got in 1990. Russian icons by Father Vladimir Ivanov from Rizzoli Books. I had a job. I was making a hundred twenty dollars a week. The book cost me eighty five dollars. I was broke after that, but I didn't care. I said I need the book. I need the book because the elders were showing us. I said I gotta see it for myself. So we're gonna go inside the book called Russian Icon. Icons means religious art, by the way. So now here is an icon of the transfiguration. Christ in the middle, Moses on the right, Elijah on the left. At the bottom, go down, you got Peter, James, and John. Everybody's black in the picture. Everybody. Give me the next one. 
Give me the words, bottom left, bottom left, so we can see. Read the words. Go ahead. Descent of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You see, it says beginning of 16th century, end of 15th to beginning of 16th century, Moscow archaeology. Moscow. Come on, let me see the image now. That is Christ in the center with the crown, the king, and the 12 apostles around him. Wait, 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 Bishop, Bishop. When he had it on the, go to the writing again. When you, when Bishop said, go to the writing, when you go up to the picture, don't pop out. Move the camera up there so they can't right. say that we switched the image on them. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So do y'all see, <laughs> hey, zoom in on Christ for a second. I want y- y'all see the complexion. Look at the hair. Do y'all see an afro? You see afro? This is in Russia. And we've been showing this for years. Decades even. Now let's go along the 12. Let's count them from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's the 12 apostles right there. Where's Charl- All black people. Right. Where's Charlton Heston at? Yeah. <laughs> G- give me the next one. Zoom in on the writing, please. Uh, which, uh, let, let me look, let me look. It's the one with Christ. Uh, 36. Uh, 36. Dionysus. Yes, Dionysus. Sir. Dionysus, crucifixion of the Lord. Uh-huh. Year 1500. 1500, because we were in Russia for a long time. They didn't get us out till late. Damn it, 1800. Right, the 1800. Ro- lower it so we can see it. Do y'all see Christ on the cross right there? Do y'all see the, the women at the cross, Mary, Martha, and them crying? Do you see the angels around, flying around Christ? Everybody is black, even Cornelius on the lower right. That's right. Everybody. And don't say it was a fire. Because right. his loincloth would have got burnt. Because right. that's what these lying Christians like to say. It was a fire. That's why the skin got burnt. Mm-hmm. Why, why didn't the loincloth get burnt? Give me the next image, please. Let's see who that is, bottom right. Miracle of the Great Martyr, St. George and the Dragon, mm-hmm. mid-16th century. Right. Y'all see Moscow Archaeology, Archaeology, Office of the Ecclesiastical Academy. So he's slaying a dragon. This was a baby dragon. Look, can we see the whole thing? This is St. George the Dragon Slayer. That was what he was called. That's Christ giving him the anointing to, and the power to kill the dragon. Look at the color of his hand. So you can't get, there ain't no white folks in that period. Exactly. Give me the next one. (laughs) Next picture. That's St. George again, the dragon slayer. How are you going to look at this and get a white boy out of that? How are you going to look at this and get an Edomite out of this? And these images are all throughout Russia in their cathedrals. That's crazy. This gives his life of St. George and how they martyred him, killed him too. Evil black folks that was ruling Russia, living in Russia. In where? Scythia. Yeah, exactly. What's amazing about looking at these images, this has been over there in Russia for years. Centuries. Centuries, Mm -hmm. hundreds of years. Yep. But yet the so-called Christian black church in this country got a white Christ in their mind. Exactly. And then they'll say, oh, well, we don't have the white images anymore, but all of the minds got white people in them. There you go. Give me the and next they won't one. dare show them any stuff like this here. Right. Exactly. Can you zoom in on the writing there? It might, I don't know if it'll get blurred. It got kind of blurred. Well, the angels are Michael and... Can you see it? Try it again. I saw it. Michael the archangel. It's there 45. I could see. Right there. 45. Archangel yes, Michael. Right yep. there. Yep. So f- pull back. That's Michael right there on the left, black. These are some of the religious leaders in Russia. You see with the crown on in the mm-hmm. middle? Look at, look at, look at, look at the, the, the garment. Right, that was just like the feet. Christ one we just saw. Everybody's black with beards. Brown complexion. Go over to the right. Can you zoom in on the writing there? That's the writing, the writing. That's Gabriel. Archangel, Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel. 
So this is Gabriel. Look at the studs the, that, on the that, clothing. That was on both of them. That's right. what I wanted them to see on the other one, too. Studs on their boots, studs on their garments, studs on their clothes. Just like it says in the song. Is that Song of Solomon 111? Mm -hmm. Somebody, Yuri, get that for me real quick. Make sure I ain't, right. you know I'm old. Bring it out. Is it 111 or somewhere around Yes, there? sir. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 11. We will make the borders of gold with studs of silver. With studs of silver. So we knew how to dress. That's right. We were not bums in Russia, in Scythia. Okay. Give me the next image, please. Let's see who these gentlemen are. 55 or 56, Bishop. Uh-huh. 55. The apostle and evangelist, St. John. And who's the other one? St. John the Baptist. Okay. Prophet and precursor of the Lord. Okay, let's pull back. Pull it down. Look at that. Black men. You get mad if you want. I don't care. Get mad all you want. Raise it up. Now, what happened? Where did white Jesus come from? I mean, give me the next picture. I'm sorry. Next image. Oh, this is the one we've been showing for decades on how you got the Orthodox Church. Their job is to what they call iconoclasm. They destroy black religious art. They have to, right, they got to focus on, let that sink in. Zoom in on so you can see, see the, see the paintbrush, see his hand. Look at the image, listen to me. See where the hand is. Zoom in on that thing that he's painting. Zoom in on that thing that he's painting. Look at that, look at that quote unquote white face. And now go up where you see that's, Look at that. Mm -hmm. So they're literally just obliterating history. Right. And you mean uh, Vladimir didn't know this? Yeah. Oh, Vladimir knew this. He knew all of this. Look at it. And look at how look the Russians looking to make sure they get that daggone thing going in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get the next one. Right there. Zoom in. Look at that. Look at the top right. Top left. I mean, top left. Give me the top left. Top. Yep. Right there. Raise it up. Right there. Do y'all see black Mary and black Christ? Now, if Mary's black and Christ is black there, pull, pull down now, pull back. Right, go down. Now, who in the hell is this Edomite, this white guy right here? Stop right. Him. You mean when he got old, he turned this, to Caesar Bojais? Huh? It's always been a conspiracy, brothers and sisters. Always. And Russia has been involved in it. If images didn't matter, why would they do this? That's right. the question that you got to ask. Why would they go through these links to do what we're seeing here? Why would they do that if it didn't matter? If right. color don't matter, why are they doing this? Exactly. I mean, look at it. Damn. You got painting the white Jesus. All them images there were black. He said, no, you got to fix it. Change it. Pull it into the public. Give me the next picture. Now, these are photographs. Look at the black images on the walls, inside the cathedrals in Russia. These Scythians were Israelites on the wall. That's right. You can see they changing the hair and all that, putting little alterations here and there. But there were so many black images, they could not get them all. Right. They got a lot, but they could not get them all. Give me the next one. That's Peter, a statue of black Peter. You mean they didn't know this? How come we can see it in the books, but they didn't know it? Da, da, pull back so we can see the whole photo. This is a photograph. Okay, give me the next one. Remember, this is in Russia. They got an ark with all black images of the, of the saints and the martyrs, the Israelites, all black faces. You see all them brown faces all on it, painted with gold around. Pull back so you can see the whole photo again. They're marching with it. These devils got a lot to pay for, too. <laughs> Give me the next one. Now, this one was Luke had painted this one, the black, black one, the, the apostle Luke. And I covered it with gold. This is all in Russia. Bishop, I don't think that sunk in. What, did y'all hear what Bishop just said? Listen, good. The picture that you see there with that gold encrusted around it, the apostle, the disciple, Luke, painted that. Yep. Luke himself, that you read out of the Bible, his fingertips and his paintbrush was on that picture. That's, That's not right. a copy. 
that's the one he painted. They have that information recorded in the book. They tell you about that. Right. Give me the next picture. Here's another one inside the church. Look on the back of the walls. These same images, when we were in Israel, they had these way... Amazon, you remember Isaac, you was there? All the lights was on where the Edomite pictures was. And you had one of the brothers from Demona walking us around. Oh, look at this, look at this. I snuck off. I said, oh, I wonder what's back there. I went into... Yeah, I'm rebellious. I went into where the black section was. There's, where no lights was, was black images yeah. just like that all on the walls in Israel. You don't find that suspicious? I said, hey, look, there's black people on the walls here. And all the brothers, everybody ran in the back. <laughs> Left, the tour guide Left the tour guide there. He was mad as hell. You don't want to hear our bulls? No, we don't want to hear your bulls. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Black images on the walls. Black angels and black bishops. Black saints and martyrs and black Israelites. Black <laughs> angels. And in the foreground, you got Edomites. Give me the next book. Now this, I don't speak, they got Russian on the left, but in English it says, read it, Yuri. The Annunciation Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin mm -hmm. for the 500th anniversary of the unique monument of Russian culture. Mm -hmm. Next one. So this is the cathedral here. That was built by Israelites. Black Israelites built all these things here. Because these are old. Let's go inside. Well, what do we have here? Let's zoom in on some of these images. Look at this. Black images all on the wall. Go ahead, pull, pull back and zoom in on some of them other ones. Yeah, look at that. Black. So Negroes is going crazy over the Sistine Chapel. But we were doing stuff like this here way before that madness. Exactly. Look All this one. is in Russia. Let's go to the next picture. Look at that one. Let's zoom in on here. There's Christ in the middle. You got Mary on the left, St. John on the right. All black on the walls. Angel right there, Uriel. Look at all these black images on the walls in the cathedral. So, Bishop. When you was making a point about these prestigious books that be in these in the rare sections of the library and all mm -hmm. of that, the the uh, the authors and the people that put the books together, they took their cameras into these areas and photographed these pictures, photographed these and put them in the book and exactly. put them inside these these bookstores and put them in the, in the Judaical sections right. where so-called Negroes don't know anything about it. These are in the Judaic book section. Black people go to the African-American section. All you read about is De excuse me, Harriet Tubman, right. Sojourner True, Frederick Douglass, and Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. You don't get the real history. You got to go to the Judaic book section. These devils have so much nerve. I remember we was in the bookstore, and Esau came over, so-called Jew. And he was looking at us going through the records, going through the picking the books up, ancient Jewish art, Moscow, the uh, Russian icons and all of that. And he said, pardon me, old chap. He said, uh, we, me and my colleague, we saw that you were, uh, that you were in this section of the library. We were just wondering if we could be some kind of assistance to you. you know, we, we, said, we looked at him and said, what kind of assistance do you think you can be? Mm. They said, well, we perhaps think that you probably wandered off into the wrong section. Right. And I said, oh, yeah? Okay, well, let's see if we're in the wrong section. We grabbed the book off the shelf, open it up, and show him these pictures. The damn devils ran out the damn store. <laughs> <laughs> That's at Strand's Bookstore, Strand's New York, Book 12th store. Street and Broadway. Mm -hmm. They moved a few blocks away because I went there. That's where it was anyway. Yeah, yes. Go ahead, Bishop. Give me the next picture. Go to the bottom so we can see who this beautiful young lady is. Read the, that. The Four Mother Eve. Oh. Fresco the Four in Mother the Eve. 1547. Now, how do you get a white woman out of that? So they know Eve was a black woman. Everybody see that? What the hell is going on here? Oh. Give me the next one. Zoom in at the bottom. Let's see who this is. The Apostle Paul. Last yeah. quarter of the 14th century. The Apostle Paul. A black man. Forehead ball, Paul. A black man. Look at his hands. What's going on here? Go down to his feet. 
So how you going to get say, oh, oh, no, no, it was burned in a fire? Nope, no, it wasn't. Give me the next one. Zoom in at the bottom. The Apostle Peter, mm -hmm. last quarter of the 14th century. Let's look at that. Peter had an afro. Look at that. Black Peter. Swarte Pete, as they say in um, Netherlands. Swarte Pete, meaning Black Pete. Look at his feet. Give me the next one. Let's see who that is. Basil the Great. Right, Basil the Great. This was a leader in Russia. Right. Lower it so we can see. Look at his hands, black hands. Lower it, come on. Look at the beard. He got a Jeroham beard. Look at that. This is a black leader in <laughs> Russia. You can see my finger on the left in contrast to the face. Yeah. Yeah. In case somebody want to get stupid. <laughs> Give me the next one. Let's zoom in at the bottom. The capture of Jericho. The, cap the Israelites captured Jericho. Joshua and the Israelites captured Jericho. Now, I, do, I did a zoom up on the next photo, because that one you might be not. Yeah, but you can see the Israelites. Look at, look at all the black faces. Look at the angel black. The Israelites are black capturing Jericho. All this is in Russia. Das Vidanyo. Da. I don't know how to speak Russian. Whatever. Give me, give me the next one. Let's go to the bottom. Oh, what did I say? The prophet Daniel. The prophet Daniel. Let's see what he looked like. A black man. A young black man in Russia. So that's why I don't care what, what what's his name? Uh, Vladimir Putin said. We've been bringing this out for decades. Give me the next one. Zoom in at the bottom. The tree of Jesse, three youths in the furnace. So, what is it? Hananiah, Mishael, and uh, help me out. Azariah. Look at that. Three black Hebrews with the angel in the midst, the son of God in the midst of the fiery furnace. Crystal clear. They're all black. That's why we can't be fooled. We can't be, can't be deceived. And we show as hell can't be bought. The hell is this? Give me the next one. Look at that. Read that, Yuri. This is the art treasures of Russia. Now go over to the left. That's St. George. Again, now this is a statue they built. With a, you got black Christ in the left corner right there, anointing him. How do you get a white guy out of that statue right there? Black as hell with an afro on his head. A neatly trimmed afro. Roll lower down, slaying the dragon. Look at a black man in the castle. Because St. George was protecting him. Watch this next picture. I'm, do, I'm, watch the next picture. Y'all see anything wrong with that? Do y'all see anything wrong? Zoom in on his face. Do y'all see there's a piece chipped away and under the white Washing is a black face under there. Wow. Do y'all see that? Drop a bomb! Drop a bomb! This is what they do. This is what iconoclasm does. Whitewash black art. You right. see the afro and under the whitewash you see the black no, color. The so-called white man said that's a birthmark. There's a birthmark on his ear. That's his ear on the left. <laughs> Give me the next book. So this is another book. Read it, Yuri, I'm sorry. Arts of Russia, right. from the origins to the end of the 18th century. Let's go inside the book. Y'all see the cathedral. There's a different cathedral now. This ain't the same one. It's a different one in Russia. You got African students in Russia going to school there, but they don't know what to look for. They're just there to get a, a degree. Right, right. They don't know, hey, let's go inside here. And look at, look at the black images on the wall. That's Gabriel anointed me, talking to Mary, telling her she's going to get pregnant. Was it Gabriel or Uriel? I always forget. One, Gabriel. Look at the black images. Go on over. Give me the next one. You remember years ago, years ago, 
A group of us, I was a cameraman, a group of us went to Hofstra University in Hempstead. Yes. And the brothers brought their books up on the table Mm -hmm. and had a group of people that was there to listen and to watch. When the brothers were bringing the books out, because before we came to the, became before the students, we, because there was a brother on the campus. Right. He took us to the bookstore and the libraries before we came up there. Correct, right. And we was looking at them, we saw that they had the same books that we had. Mm-hmm. So when we went before them, the people was like, yo, where y'all get them books from? This is showing you that the people that go to these universities right. don't know anything about what's in their own university. A lot of them was black people in order. That's who was there. And the black people say, yo, yo, where y'all get them books from? And the brother said, we just toured your library and you got these same books in your campus, but your, your scholars and your professors ain't telling you about right. it. Remember, and the professors on, got up and left. They were pissed off. Talk on Leonard Jeffries. Yes. What he said, what he wanted to do. Uh, Jeffries wanted to open up the school curriculum right. to start going into the history. Right. And they feared, that's why they threw up that quote-unquote anti-Semitic thing. Yes. Because if they, if they continue to allow the professors to go into the opening up the uh, records, it was going to reveal that we ruled right. the Dark Ages. Yes, it, was right. gonna rule, it was going to prove that we all the images that's coming out, the vaults and all that, Co- that would have been shown then. Right, because you had Shia, uh, yep. Kazakh, all the, Arya. Yep. We were there, and they had all these books proving that we ruled the Middle Ages yep. as kings, queens, all that of that. Crazy. The Israelites, that's black, right. all of that. Go back to the picture. All this is in Russia. Look at that. This is on the walls. Y'all see that? Go, yeah. Look at that. Look at that one right there. Yep. Give me the next one. Next one. Right there. Look at that. Look on the walls. Black images. Chris, Chris, Christians don't know nothing about what we're talking about. Yeah, Kemet no. don't know nothing about what we're talking about. Islam Muslims don't know what we're talking about. But we're showing you evidence and proof. Get mad at us if you want. Now, you had a, a video, uh, Bishop? You got a short video? Let's show it. Oh, this was in, in Israel. Here we go. I don't think it's possible that anyone from the, the Bible were like Europeans. Europeans, like, European, like right. white European. Right. Because it's like it was all happened here in like Middle East, next to like Africa. Middle East, Africa, mm-hmm. it's like everything. Everyone here has like darker skin. You know the Bible a little bit? Remember when that Herod was going to kill baby Jesus? And the angel came to Joseph and said, Take the young child and his mother and flee into, you remember they ran to? Egypt. That's in Africa. Yes. Before the Ottomans, before the Arabs took it over. So they're all black. Probably. In order to hide there, you have to be black. Probably, yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> it is so good meeting the two of you again. What's your name? Nathaniel. 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 What's your name, young lady? Naomi. Naomi, congratulations on your future wedding. See, we can be cute and nice. We know how to talk to people. What the hell is this? We ain't angry Negroes with an attitude. We know how to be nice and talk. What the hell is this? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, look at that black image right there. Look, look. That's in Israel. All the lights was off. We had to shine lights on it. Don't show this to the public. Look at that. Look at a black woman in there. Look. This is where the public was not at. But we went back there. We went back there. I was fat. Dad, going. What the hell was wrong with me? That's where all the Edomite pictures was. All the white folks was there, and that's where our tour guide took. We ran right back here. I ran here. I said, hey, look, black people. That's our tour guide. Star Mariel. That's him in the, from Demona. Even in that church, they have a painting depicting the Queen of Sheba visiting King Solomon, and the images are basically white, but the Queen of Sheba is basically barely, barely pink. But there's an explanation for that. 
So wait, pause it, pause it. So Saar Amadiel, he's the head of the Demona community. He was talking many of the same stuff and taking us to the same Caucasian areas. We had to get away from him. We said, what's wrong with this brother? He's leading us astray. So we just left him. Go ahead, play on. This is called the chapel of the invention of the cross. And I do mean invention, but they meant to say discovery of the cross. Praying to rocks and all of that. Yep. One lady was telling me if I put my ear to some granite, you could hear swords. Mm -hmm. I put my ear to that. I think I got gangrene on that thing. <laughs> yeah, they said put your ear to that. You can hear something. What the hell is this? They, the stone upon which Christ was beaten lies in a shrine under a marble slab. By placing their ears on the slab. Isaac telling me, put, go ahead and put your head down there. You know, it got me doing some strange stuff. Yeah, what does it do? I heal, it heals me? Oh, listen, you said listen. <laughs> Bishop, you might get an infection. Be careful. <laughs> I have nothing. She said, because you're black. Maybe because you're working on black. No, no, no. Bishop, let's go to the. Let me wipe the road. Let's go to the. What the hell was that? It was crowded. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre was very crowded. It's a large tourist attraction. And like you said, we did cut from the street, interviewing many people. Primarily, we actually, the first people we interviewed were some Nigerian brothers and sisters. Those were the first yes, ones. Yes. And that was cool. After that, you know, uh, the brothers from Demona, they didn't uh, appreciate that too much. But we told them that's what we do. This is IUIC. We about the Father's business. So we get inside the Holy Sepulchre, like you said, and um, the brothers taking us on a tour. And I'd already told them, we don't do tours. Mm -hmm. We're not here to tour or sightsee, we're here to work. So anyway, he continues telling us about some Caesar Bourget stuff. We just walked off and we did more interviews and talked to people. Uh, I tell you, I don't know about that. Oh yeah, yeah, this, this was, the, Play that, huh? they wouldn't let me in the room. The synagogue. They were, Amalek was all in there praying. I think that's a synagogue in there. I saw Amalek in there. Praying and worship. Okay. What is this? Church, Greek Orthodox. Greek Orthodox Church. Yes. Why you covered his face? No. Why not? How come? Isaac, why you covered his face? No photo, please. Okay. How do you Man. know you're going to pray? Why are you covering his face? Come on, come on, Mishnah, come, come. Come on, that way. Esau is the devil. <laughs> All praises to the most hey. high. Esau's going into captivity. The real Jews are black. And say yes. The real Jews are black. Da. Say da. There you go. There you go. I think that was it. That was it. That was it. That's enough. All praise. Y'all can see the rest online. But uh, what were you going to say? Israel, I'm banned from Israel. They bla from blacklisted me. I'm not allowed to go back. Yeah, you blacklist. They got you on Canary Mission as the most, yeah. most hateful person in America. So you ain't, you ain't going go back, back to Israel anyways. You, know? you, you can send your soldiers. Your soldiers yeah, yes. going to handle it. We're going to send y'all. <laughs> so Vlad, people ask, why would Vladimir Putin do this thing? Vladimir Putin is accomplishing two things. One, I'm going to talk about the first one. Putin is playing psychological warfare in the United States with the Christian church. What he did, if he did it, it's gonna mess up Christianity from America, Canada, all over, yep. Yep. okay? 
Hey, give me the next clip. I want to start at 319. We're going to go from 319. Write this down, Elisha. 319 to 610. 319 to 610. Uh, wait a minute. Let me make sure you're going to show the right one. I don't think that's the right one. Let me look. Hold on, hold on. I'm checking. Bear with me. No, that ain't that ain't that ain't, that ain't it, uh, Alicia. No, it's a, it's it starts off. It, the name of the video is "White People Frown at President Putin." That's the name of the video. White people frown at President Putin. I'm going. I'm gonna resend it because y'all messing up already. I'm resending it. You should have it now. I want to go from 319 to 610. You got me, Alicia? All right. Start at 319. 319. Start at 319. Now, I want you all to listen to this white woman. Go back a few seconds. Yeah, when she starts. Blow it up. Come on on the screen. Go ahead. Well, well, well. Raise it up. You know, there's a lot of Arabic people and Palestinian people. A lot of people over there. Hey, we can't see the, what the words say. Putin pulls brown out brown what? Hair. Lower that for a moment. I don't know where they got it from. Alicia, lower that. What's that thing? Yes, we want to see what it says. Now go back again. So Putin pulls out old dusty black Jesus. Yeah, go ahead. Play. You know, there's a lot of Arabic people and Palestinian people, a lot of people over there with blue eyes and reddish brown hair. I don't, I don't know where they got it from. Over White there folks mix with them. I'm sure it was some kind of gene. Just like being black and just like being white, it has to do with your genes color of your eyes. I'm sure we could find out. But Putin and dusting off his black Jesus from the Kremlin attic, that is one heck of a <laughs> Why are we just finding out? Did I think Jesus was blonde and blue eyed? I didn't really care. Really? Yes, you did. I do care about my wig, though. My hair's looking up. Oh, it's time for a do. But anyway, get back. Mr. Putin... You drew the race card. Now what you going to do with it? You got all these black people excited that you have a picture of a black Jesus. You're saying black. To me, sir, it just looks like a dark Jesus. Because I don't know what kind of paint or colors or whatever they had over there. But they had to have something for black. Was it coal? What was it? It's very coal. Anyway. Mr. Putin, you're sneaky. Listen. You're going to nuke Wait, us, aren't you? Wait, go back. You messed it up, Alicia. You got to hear what she says. Anyway, Mr. Putin, you're sneaky. You're going to nuke us, aren't you? You're just doing something to hurt the whole world before you nuke us all. <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter what color Jesus is? Is this going to change what what he does for us after we've been worshiping him? I don't worship a picture, never have. I'm not Catholic. Mr. Putin, what do you think you're doing to Joe? Hurting his feelings. No, I did not vote for Joe. Anyway, black people, I'm happy for you. Something ought to make you happy. I mean, come on now. Because y'all been really upset for years, huh? I hope, I hope. That's a clan member right there. Black people. I'm happy for you. Something ought to make you happy. I mean, come on now. Because y'all been really upset for years, huh? I hope, I hope this 
helps you, just like when I voted for Obama because I was hoping he would be a great president for the blacks so they could stop being so racist against white people because they think the white people invented slavery when actually it was the black. Anyway, I don't want to go there. But Mr. Putin, you drew out that race card, and I want to know why. Well, all righty then. That was it. That was the 610, yeah. right? Yeah, that was it. That's all I wanted. So, well, all righty then. Give me Psalm 64 and 2. Psalms chapter 64, verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. The wicked is so-called white men and the, all the other nations included. I'm throwing them all in there, right? From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Let's look up the word insurrection. Put it up on the screen. I gave it to you. I gave it to you. You ain't got to type nothing. That ain't it. Yeah, that's it. Insurrection. An act or instance of rising in revolt rebellion or resistance against civil authority or an established government there's going to be a hey, so read psalm 64 and 2 again hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity so they're going to rise up against god's established government that's who's that's these edomites are getting mad that the truth is coming out there's going to be a civil war against the 12 tribes of Israel. They're going to try and slaughter us. Do you do y'all realize what hap what it means when you start proving on a worldwide scale that Christ is black? Y'all a lot of people don't understand the uh ramifications. The, 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 yeah, the the repercussions and everything else that's going to come from this here. Don't you realize that foreign policy, the beginning of it, when the, when 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 this country sends out its missionaries to basically rape the minds of the people in these mm -hmm. countries that they want to later rob and pillage them for their uh, resources. They have to first rape the minds with white Christian, mm -hmm. with white images. That's what they have to do. And that's what allows the, the natives of these lands to lay down and say, here, take, take our resources in the name of white Jesus. Yep. Now, when the truth comes out, there's, there's going to be some resistance to that. There's going to be some pushback on that. And that's going to start a whole wave of problems. Not only dealing with foreign policy, but it's also going to start a wave of problems right here in this country. Mm. Churches mainly. Go ahead. Get Acts 18 and 12. Acts 18 and 12. This is the trouble the Apostle Paul had to go through. Acts. Start 11. I like 11 too. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 18, verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Right. And when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. So they made insurrection against Paul because they didn't want to hear keeping the commandments in the name of Christ. They didn't want to hear that. Give me 2nd Ezra 16, verse 70. I'm showing you insurrection. Second, here's the prophecy. Come on. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 70. For there shall be in every place, and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Mm, Y'all see that right there? There shall be a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Revelation 12, 17, it says the same thing in the New Testament. Watch this. It just says it in a similitude, a metaphor, an allegory. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that word war there can be translated to what, brothers? Insurrection. This is war. That's right. So now, Putin threw that out allegedly. Okay. It messes with everybody's mind. And they say, what should it matter if Christ is black? Well, if Christ is black, which he is. That means you enslaved his black people. Right, and that means them white people over there are not the Jews according to the Bible. That's messing up foreign policy. Because now everything is Israel, Israel, Israeli. Well, Putin just proved, allegedly, that those are not the Jews of the Bible. 
That's what he did. So now it's like, hmm. Right. So why are we... So why are we bombing these people if they right. are not God's people? There you go. And then where are God's people? There and who's go. mistreating them? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, it right that's the problem. That is the problem. So the next next thing that Putin is trying to do is uh, create African allegiances. I'm going to show you. So first on the psychological, he's letting everybody know, hey, Jesus is black. Okay. Now watch the allegiance. Give me the next video. Let me make sure you got the right one. I don't want y'all messing up. I'm going to give you the name. It says Putin pledges free grain. That one. Watch this. Listen good. I can't hear it. You, you, stop, stop. It's in Russian. You have to move that lower thing. We cannot see what's being said. That yes, you gotta keep that off the screen. Go back to the beginning. Now play so we can hear see what's going on. Yuri, Re read it. President Putin blames West for grain shortages, promises African nations free supplies from Russia. Do y'all see what this man is doing? That's some warfare right there. He's getting some resources. He's going to get access to land. He sold the African, we gonna give y'all free grain. Keep going. Заседание директор института Африки российская. На первые шесть месяцев только за. А мы будем готовы уже в ближайшие. We will be prepared to provide Burkina Faso, Zimbabwe, Mali, Somalia. В ближайшие три-четыре месяца безвозмездно предоставить Буркина Фасо, Зимбабве, Мали. Some the Central African Republic and Eritrea with 25,000 to 50,000 tons of grain. Mali, Central African Republic, Eritrea. Free of charge in the next three or four months. Free of charge. That's free food. Wow. Remember what America did? Huh? I know there's, I know there's, a, there's going to be a price to pay. That's why he's the devil too. But remember, America made uh, Africa dependent on them and the other nations. So they, can't, they ain't growing their own food and stuff. So now food is short over there. Russia now comes in as the savior. We're going to give you free grain in three to four months. But there's going to be a price tag on that. Hey, they're gonna, they they want to do him like they did Chavez. That wanted to deal with the oil with the people. Mm -hmm. So they probably want to do that with him. But I don't think they're going to be that successful. Hey, Bishop, At least not now. Can I say something yes, about that? This is how you know this is not for free. I don't know how, how many of you met. I don't know how many of you watched the news. Uh, this, I think that's that last week. Now, if you know Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, let's talk about Niger. America, remember what Niger, Niger been doing is Niger kicked the French out. Right? So this is what Niger did. Niger signed contract with Russia and Iran. America sent a delegate to Niger telling Niger, we concerned because Niger got the resource to actually make chemical weapon. So they told Niger, we concerned about you signing deal with Russia and Iran. Guess what Niger did? Niger said, since you come in here talking shit, excuse me, talking crap, get out. Now Niger want America to leave. That's how you know. That's not free. He know what he's doing, like Bishop said. He's signing contract so he can take the resources. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like you 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 kicking out the devil out. You bringing out the devil in. Right. What's the difference? Right. And it's and guess guess what? It's not just um getting their resources, getting areas to build nuclear yes. weapons and put them weapons. Closer to America. So exactly. That's exactly what he's doing. Hey, Bishop, you know, you know, also, he just signed with Burkina Faso to build a oil refinery in Africa. Right. Africa, those, those places never had that before. Right. Exactly. He's buying real estate. Mm hmm Play on. We will also provide free delivery of these products to consumers. <laughs> Yeah. Russia's share in the world wheat market is 20%. Ukraine's less than 
This means that it is Russia that makes a significant contribution to global food security and is a solid, responsible international supplier of agricultural products. And to those who claim that this is not so, that only the provision of this so-called grain deal for the export of Ukrainian grain matters <coughs> are simply distorting the facts, telling lies. Give me the next video, Elisha. The next one should say Putin made a deal. Yes. The U.S. losing to Putin, more than 1,000 U.S. military personnel getting kicked out of Niger, an essential military agreement falling apart. Niger wants a major American ally, turning instead to Putin. Russia has been feverishly working to expand its presence, not just in Niger, but across all of Africa, mineral-rich and uh, many, many countries, with one top U.S. military official warning that several African nations are, quote, at the tipping point of falling under Russia's influence. Out front now, John Sullivan, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia. And, Ambassador, you know, we have seen this in countries, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, across Africa. Now you've got a 1,000 Americans kicked out of Niger, a 10-year deal over. This was a crucial uh, location for U.S. troops, uh, counter-terror efforts. Putin now gaining ground. Can you explain why this matters so much? That's all I want. I just, I'm showing you all what Putin is doing. So the Christian, Christ, America's a Christian nation. That's messed up with, the, with black Jesus. Yes. Now he's giving grain and making deals with Africa. So you're like, what the hell? Now we know, they got to realize Putin is the devil. He, he's the same people yeah. Yeah. As, as, as the rest of them. Because right. you got to ask yourself, what happened to all the black people in Russia that painted all them black images? <laughs> they were enslaved and killed. So Putin ain't no angel. Not at all. Hey, give me a Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Y'all know what I want. We just discovered black Jesus. You didn't just discover that. Y'all been praying to that, that them images for centuries. To this day. To this day. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Go ahead. And a gift destroyeth the heart. So the African countries are mad at what America and her allies have been doing. So now Russia comes in giving them gifts. That gift will mess you up. That gift of free grain, mineral resources and all that will mess them up. Give me a Sirach, uh, Ecclesiastes 39, 26, please. But he's he's given them things that was literally stripped from them through the through the uh, foreign policies and the embargoes and so forth. The the natives of these lands can't even get to the things that grows right there in their own country. Putin said, "I'm gonna give that back to you." Instant friendship. Yep. Instant friendship. Hey, give me. You know what I want? Set description. Not yet. Give me the next video. I'm gonna show you this one. Watch this. It should say Russia President Putin. Y'all see that? Yes, that's it. Watch this. As the Ukraine-Russia war drags on, Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. This arises a debate around Putin's growing reliance on the church. More on this in our next report. Emphasizing on the importance of the holy icon, Putin ordered Andrei Rublev's Trinity be transferred Wait, stop, to the Russian... Or go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. I gotta show y'all. We built this. Y'all see this? They, and they, they, Esau don't know how to redo this again. Our people did this. So this clip, I know the thick East Indian accent. Putin is moving a, a holy icon from one place to another. Watch what he says. Now watch the black images. Go ahead. TB transferred to the Russian Orthodox Church. Stop! From yeah, go back! 
Go, do y'all see the black images on the walls? You got that on the left right there. I just showed y'all these things. On the right, top right, top right, top right, right there. And in the back behind the thing on the wall, go in the back, in the back, and further up, up. Yep, up there. Black images all on the walls. So that's why I said, they said, Putin didn't say that. Y'all making things up. Well, this is a real news uh, clipping right here. He's moving one holy icon. Watch what it says. Go on. Church from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery for a year. The relocation of Russia's most well-known icon highlights how closely the war has intertwined politics and religion. Stop! He said, the, wait, wait, she said, the, go back, I just messed up. Y'all laughing, but tell it's funny. Go back, go back. Listen to what she says. Closely, the war has intertwined politics and religion. The war has intertwined, intertwined religion and politics, politics and religion. Go back a few seconds. And now look, I want you to look at these black images. They know, go ahead. Icon highlights how closely the war has intertwined politics and religion. Trinity is a 15th century artwork, which is all said to take its place in the Cathedral of Christ. The Wait, did y'all notice anything? On the outside, there's statues of white people. But on the inside, there's black people painted on the walls. Y'all got to pick up on stuff like that. That's the reason why, like, like that, I give an example, Bishop. It was a book that we have. One was called, there's two of them. One is called the Oxford, Illust the Oxford mm -hmm. Illustrated History of the British Monarchy. Right. And then there's another one that's called the Oxford Illustration of Medieval Europe. And they got white people on the cover. You will go in the book, you will go in the bookstore and see the book and see the white images on it and walk on by. That's the point that you're making about the white statues outside. Mm -hmm. But when you open up the book, right. you find the remarkable windows of Augsburg mm -hmm. with Jonah, Daniel, Hosea, black on the walls. That's right. On the windows. Go back so we don't miss the thought. Go ahead. Which is all said to take its place in the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. The icon depicts the Oak of Mamre, where the three angels visited Abraham in the book of Genesis. Uh, wait, wait, Alicia, we're trying to read. I, she's speaking Russian. Lower that so we can read. Is it translated? Read that, Yuri. The Holy Trinity is the main monument of Russian culture. We have something similar only over there. Okay, play on. The churches of the Moscow Kremlin. We have nothing else like that. Trinity is over six centuries. Oh, no one knows its exact date. No one knows if it was made by Andrei Rublev or not. Specialists from the Tretyakov gallery still aren't sure about that. <laughs> Researchers of the Russian Orthodox Church are arguing that this transfer of icons is a political move on behalf of Putin. He wants to keep the church on his side in this war by showing his respect to the religious institution. The West claims that Putin is framing the war as a battle for the survival of Russia, to which the researchers further demand that he needs to prove that the war is not his personal military activity, but that there is a higher metaphysical mission in Russia that he is trying to fulfill. Do y'all see in this? The Go ahead, play. First, several Russian propagandists have used Christian symbolism about fighting the devil. They have even used antichrist symbols to rally support for a war that has gone on much longer than the expectations. He's going to use Christ images to further the war. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. Just wants to help Ukraine defeat Russia on the battlefield. Now, these are the same ones. Well, hold on. In the book that they was painting, I, all I can, this is the same people, these dudes. Go ahead but not at the cost of destroying Russia. 
On the other hand, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, who is a close ally of Putin's, is portraying the war as a metaphysical battle for Russia's survival. Survival against the evil and decadent West seeking to destroy Russia. There is unease at the sway of the church and concern about possible damage to the fragile icon. Concerns have surfaced about the conditions the icon would be kept in attend to it. A Russian art historian who has spoken out against the transfer. That was it? The Holy Trinity is like the Mona Lisa for our culture. Has circumstances been a little different? Perhaps she would have been just as popular globally. The historian taunted how the Russian leaders over centuries have turned to icons in tough situations with the hope of victory. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all okay. missed that. Go back. Go back to what she just said. I know it's accent is thick. The historian taunted how the Russian leaders over centuries have turned to icons in tough situations with the hope of victory. They turn to icons in the hope of victory. Wow. So now they're going to turn to the black icons to win the war. That's what they're saying. Hey, Bishop, over the years, we, we always see Putin with the black Madonna. Yeah. And he, it's nothing new. He ain't open no vault. He been new. He been knew that the Jews were people of color. That's right. You, you know, for years. Black. You see, they black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they black. They us. That's right. Okay, we are the people of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So so they always know that, and he always got the black Madonna. For years, I've been seeing them little clippings. You all been seeing it online, so no, no, it's psychological warfare he's dealing with right now because mm -hmm. he's a he was he's a secret agent, man. He knows mm -hmm. to do warfare with people's minds. Yep. And you know, they could flip this whole thing and say, Oh, y'all believe in black Christ? Because you know Russia's um communists. Yeah. They could say, Oh, all y'all are communists. Remember back in the 50s, 40s, there was a whole thing against communism. They could come and flip the whole script on, oh, y'all are communists, yep, yep. go to jail. Yep. That's how they could flip this yep. on us. He saw the devil. Psalm 6, uh, 83, Psalms 83, 4 and 5, please. That was it, Alicia, right? Huh? All right, one minute left, go back. Good. Taunted how the Russian leaders over centuries have turned to icons in tough situations with the hope of victory. The church now has a whole new level of authority. If the church acts for something, it most likely. cannot be refused. It. Things have changed so much since 24th of February. We have this new coordinated policy between the state and the church. Even though the Russian historians are opposing this transfer order, the church seems to be in support of it. The church has said that the required controls will be provided at the Moscow Cathedral. Tretyakov staff will also supervise the artwork during. Go back, go back a few seconds, a few little clips. Right there. Look on the walls in the back. Go ahead, play. Look right there in the forefront, black. Go ahead, play. We'll also supervise Look in the, the back artwork right there. during its stay. Look in the back. We don't report. We on. World is one. That was it. Okay. Psalms 83, please. Psalms 83. Psalms chapter So yes, the vault has been opened. Yes. And the truth is coming out. Give me that Psalms 85, 11, I think. Psalms chapter 85, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Truth shall spring out of the earth. That's right. And so, right. Go ahead. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Psalms 83, 4 and 5, please. Psalms chapter 83, verse 4. Mm -hmm. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Hey, can you get me a group, a picture of the, the think tank, the delegates? Yeah, come on, put it on the screen and read it again. They have said, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So it was not just one group of people. All nations took part in this. All nations. Go ahead. That the name of Israel 
may be no more in remembrance. They said we must destroy God's people. Come on. For they have consulted together with one consent. See what it said? They have consulted together with one consent. They all agreed to wipe Israel from our minds. They all agreed to make us think we were nothing but African Americans and Jamaicans and Puerto Ricans. That's, they all agreed on that thing. Go ahead. They are confederate against thee. They're all confederate against thee. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. Now, Edom is the first nation. That includes Putin, Vladimir Putin. That includes uh, Joe Biden. Yep. That includes, uh, Mac 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 what's his name? Macron. Macron. Netanyahu. All of them Europeans. All of them so-called Caucasians are Edom. Everybody understand that, right? Go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. That's the Arabs. The Israelite. That ain't the Ishmaelite right there. Put the Ishmaelite on the screen so nobody get confused. Yep, you can put them on there. That's the Ishmaelite. Oh, shoot. Run! Run! So, I, I, listen. It's the Palestinians. So, give me Psalms 64 and 1. Psalms chapter 64, verse 1. Hold on, let me get it. Go ahead. Hear my voice, O God, mm -hmm. in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. So David is praying. That David's prayer is our prayer, prayer today. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Go ahead. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. The secret counsel of the wicked is what we just read in Psalms 83, the 83rd chapter, where they were confederate against God's people. Go ahead. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Right. There's, they, will, they are planning an insurrection against the 12 tribes of Israel. Those that wake up keeping the commandments in Christ. Go ahead. Who wet their tongue like a sword. Meaning what? They slander us. You guys are murderers. You're thieves. You're a hate group. That's what it means who wet their tongue like a sword. Go ahead. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Right, because the, arrow, the words that come out of their mouth is meant to hurt us. Meant to get all nations against us once again. Go ahead, right. Like the SPLC. Go ahead. Even bitter words. Even bitter words. Go ahead. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Right, because they'll say they love everybody. But then in secret, they're creating propaganda machines against us. Go ahead. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. And they don't fear. Go ahead. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Right, come on. They commune of laying snares privily. They commune, they discuss or, or have meetings of laying traps privately, secretly. Go ahead. They say, who shall see them? Who's going to see us? Who's going to figure out that these group of men, white men and other nations, have plotted? Put the other one on the screen that you had. Right. Have plotted against the 12 tribes of Israel. Who's going to realize that? Go ahead. They search out iniquities. Mm -hmm. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. That's right. Go ahead. But God shall sh shoot at them with an arrow. God will let a missile cut loose on them. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Suddenly shall these nations be wounded. Go ahead. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. That's what Putin just did. Putin's bringing out on the news that what? The Jews are black. Christ is black. Read it again. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Mm -hmm. All that see them shall flee away. That's right. Go ahead. And all men shall fear. Everybody going to fear because it's going to lead to war. This shall lead to war. That's what they said. They're mixing religion what is it? And politics. Go ahead. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, mm -hmm. for they shall wisely consider his of his doing. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord. We're going to be glad in the Lord. Go ahead. And shall trust in him mm -hmm. and all the upright in heart shall glory. From there, from there, give me Psalms, uh, I mean, Revelation 16. It's going to lead to war. World War Three Armageddon. Armageddon. Revelation 16. Let's start at verse 10. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Mm -hmm. And his kingdom was full of darkness. His kingdom is full of darkness. Go ahead. And they gnawed their tongues for pain mm -hmm. and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains mm -hmm. and their sores. Right. 
and repented not of their deeds. Although the Lord brings destruction and things of that nature, uh, coronavirus, things of that nature, disease, they're not going to repent. It says they repented not of their deeds. So you're, people are waiting for America. America's not going to repent. Just as Europe, France will never repent. Palestine, Saudi Arabia, these nations will not repent. Go ahead. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, mm -hmm. and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Hey, give me the precept for that. Yes, Second sir. Ezra 15, 28. And we're coming back here, Yuri, so don't drop it. Second Ezra, chapter 15. Verse 28. Yeah, that's the Euphrates being dried up right now. Go ahead. Behold, an horrible vision in the appearance thereof from the east. From the east. Who's coming from the east, Reed? Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia. Go ahead. Shall come out with many chariots. Uh -huh. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. Let's go back now. So from the horrible vision from the east is the dragons of Arabia. The Arabs are going to pop this off. Revelation 16, 12, one more again. Yes, sir. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Uh -huh. That the way of the kings of the Arabians might be dried up. Go ahead, read it again. And the sixth angel... Might be prepared, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Right. And the I kings of the Saudi Arabia. Go ahead. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Come out of the mouth of the dragon. Write this down. Politics. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the beast. Out of the mouth of the beast. Economics. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. Religion, Christianity comes out of the mouth of the false prophet. Religion. Those are the three reasons nations fight. For political reasons, economic reasons, and religious reasons. Those are the three reasons nations fight. So I'm going to talk about the politics for just a second. Okay? Give me the Wikipedia about liberal democracy, please. Everybody want to be democratic. Yuri, you got to read. It's not on the screen. Liberal democracy, liberal democracy, Western style democracy, or substantive democracy is a form of government that combines the organization of a representative democracy with ideas of liberal political philosophy. Raise it up. Start with common. Common elements within a liberal democracy are elections between or among multiple distinct political parties, a separation of powers into different branches of governments, the rule of law in everyday life as part of an open society, mm -hmm. a market economy with private property, universal suffrage, and the equal protection of human rights, civil rights, civil liberties. So we're living under democracy. This is what it is. Go ahead. And political freedoms for all citizens. Allegedly. Go ahead. Substantive democracy refers to substantive rights and substantive laws with equality of outcome for subgroups in society, such as substantive equality. Now, give me Isaiah 32 and 5, please. <clears throat> that was a fan. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 5. Yes. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. The vile person shall no more be called liberal. That's this democratic nation. That's democracy. <laughs> A democracy is liberal. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, do what you want. If it feels good, do it. Read again. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. God says, the Lord says, the vile. You want to hide the vile person. Not upstanding, righteous person. Thank you. It says the vile person shall no more be called liberal. Because I want democracy. Wherever you go out to, I want to be democratic, liberal. That's what they want. Go ahead. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. The churl meaning, the word churl means rude. It's still referring to the liberal democracies. 
Okay, it says said to be bountiful because uh, under democracy, you become very wealthy. Here in America, it becomes very wealthy. Go ahead. For the vile person will speak villainy. He's still calling him vile. For the vile person will speak villainy. Go ahead. And his heart will work iniquity mm -hmm. to practice hypocrisy. They practice hypocrisy. Go ahead. And to utter error against the Lord. Everything democracy says goes against the Lord. Go ahead. To make empty the soul of the hungry. We're the hungry. We're hungry for the truth. We're hungry for salvation. They make our souls empty with lies. Go ahead. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. We're the thirsty. We're thirsty for truth and righteousness. We're thirsty for justice. And we get none. Our drink fails. We get an empty glass. They say, here, drink this. And we go to drink. There's nothing in there. Go ahead. The instruments also of the churl are evil. The instruments, the school system, the church system, okay? The, the, the entire, the economic system. Every form of system they have is their instruments. Their medical, uh, um, give me the word, for their hospitals, that's another form of their instruments. The pharmaceutical company, Inch, that's an instrument. Okay, the psych, like, hey, pull up the tree of eugenics. That'll help me out. Pull up the eugenics tree. Here's an example of their instruments. You got it? Okay, you got Roman Catholic, white supremacy. I don't think it's, no, not this one. Yes, this other one. Yes, eugenics. Sir. Eugenics. Eugenics is the self-direction of human evolution, anatomy, biology, physiology, psychology. Now, these are all their instruments. Read it again slowly. Anatomy. Anatomy. Biology. Right? Mm -hmm. Physiology. Mm -hmm. Psychology. All right. Mental testing. Mm -hmm. anthro anthrop mm -hmm. Anthropology. Anthrop anthrop mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Read History. It. History. Geology. Archaeology. Oh, I saw an example. Everything works to European or Edomite benefit. These all work collectively against our people. Go ahead. Anthropology, ethnology, geography, law, politics, statistics, economics. Like you might say, how does geography work against us? On a map, they'll show European countries larger than what dark nations are, like Africa. But it's the other way around. All that psychological game with us, against us. Okay. Go ahead. Genealogy, mm -hmm. sociology. Like they cut off our genealogy. Go ahead. Education, religion, mm -hmm. psychiatry. Education, religion, all these things work to our disadvantage. Go ahead. Surgery, mm -hmm. medicine. Surgery. You mean that's a good thing. No, if you get the book Medical Apartheid, whatever uh, knowledge they got, they got through experimenting with black and brown people and murdered millions of us in the process. Go ahead. Right, we were the guinea pigs. Exactly. Go ahead. That was it, sir. Oh, that was it? Okay. So, um, back to Isaiah 32 and 7. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. So those were some of the instruments that they use that are evil. Go ahead. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Where's the poor? And when it says poor, it's referring to the poor in spirit. Jump down. Give me Isaiah 14, 32 as an evidence. Proof. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord hath found in Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it? So the poor of his people is the poor in spirit. Give me the precept to that one in Matthew 5, please. Where Christ was speaking. So it's the poor of Zion. It ain't the poor of all nations. And here's what it's talking about, Matthew 5. Find me the verse 3. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So it ain't so much talking about your bank account. Because Nicodemus was rich, but he was what? Poor in spirit. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea was rich. But guess what? He also was poor in spirit. Zacchaeus, the short brother which worked for uh, the publicans, they were tax collectors. He was rich, it said, but he also was poor in spirit. So read it again, Yuri. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why are we poor in spirit? We have nothing. 
We've lost the kingdom on earth. We've lost it all. Go back. Isaiah 32 and 7. One more again. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices mm -hmm. to destroy the poor. To destroy the poor, go ahead. With lying words. With lying. We love you. We want to help black people and Latin. We want to help you. It says with lying words. Go ahead. Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when the needy speak right. Like when they say, hey, we deserve reparations. We deserve justice. We get nothing here in the society. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. But the liberal deviseth liberal things. That's your Democrats, guy, and Republicans, go ahead. And by liberal things shall he stand. Now, from there, give me Revelation uh, 13, 11. Revelation, chapter 13, verse 11. Wait, wait, let me get it. Okay. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This is America. The two horns is democracy and republicanism. He had two horns like a lamb, because they say we are God-fearing, in God we trust. But God says, and he spake as a dragon. That's what we just read in Isaiah 32. How do you speak? Villainy! Read. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. America exercises all the power of Rome. Go ahead. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, uh -huh. whose deadly wound was healed. That's Rome. How does America make everyone worship Rome? The days of our week come from Rome. The days of the months come the month come from Rome. Okay, uh, give me some more. On your dollar bill, Roman numerals. Roman numbers, 1776. We're taught Roman history. The Senate is based on ancient Rome. Congress is based on ancient Rome. Capitol Hill is based on ancient Rome. Everybody understand that? What'd you say? The Senate Hall, yes. Exactly, Rome. Look at the bottom of the pyramid. That's Roman numerals. They spoke in Latin. Novus Ordo Seclorum, that's Latin from Rome. New World Order. A new it coeptus, that's Latin from Rome. Our enterprise success. Everybody understand that? Yes, Read it again, verse 12, one more again. Yes, sir. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, mm -hmm. whose deadly wound was healed. That was Rome, because Rome came back in power. Rome resurrected during the Renaissance era. Go ahead. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven. This was 1945 when he dropped the atom bomb on Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Read it again. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Right, if you ever see the movie, watch the movie Oppenheimer. They show you that, okay? So now, so that's the first thing. Politics is one reason nations fight, politics. The next thing we talked about, money. Economic growth, every nation wants a stable economy. Okay, give me Revelation 6, 5. Revelation chapter 6, verse That's 5. Wait, wait, let me get it. I'm slow. <sighs> Go ahead. Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. Mm -hmm. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Hey, can you find me a picture of a black horse and a man having a pair of scales in his hand? I didn't, a scale is fine. Any, anyone. I don't care. Anyone. High res. High resolution. Well, I don't care. Shouldn't take forever. Yes, anyone. A good one. Yes, fine. Right. So read that again, Uriah. I'm sorry. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So this black horse represents Esau, how they deal with the black nations. Their balances represent justice. Do, a, do justice towards us. Watch what it says in the next verse, though. Verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, 
a measure of wheat for a penny. A measure of wheat for a penny. If a measure of wheat goes for a penny in one country, it should go for how much in another country? The same thing. Go ahead. And three measures of barley for a penny. If three measures of barley go for a penny in one country, it should go for what in another country? Same thing, a penny. Go ahead. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, why does it say, see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine? Get Ecclesiastes 39, verse 26. What is the importance of oil and wine? Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 26. The principal things for the whole use of man's life. The principal things for the whole use of man's life. No, I mean, that means globally. Wherever you go on this planet, there are principal things man needs to have to survive. Go ahead. Are water, mm -hmm. fire, mm -hmm. iron, mm -hmm. and salt, mm -hmm. flour of wheat. Oh, wheat? Didn't we read about? Go ahead. Honey, honey, milk, milk, and the blood of the grape. Blood of the grape. What is blood of the grape, brothers? Wine. Wine. Go ahead. And oil. And what? And oil. And oil. Go ahead. And clothing. So these are principal things nations need to survive. So go back now to Revelation 6 and 6. 6 and 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Don't be unjust with us. That's what the dark nations are saying. But America, the IMF, which they have in Washington, D.C., and the World Bank are unjust. What costs a penny here will cost, give me a, eight dollars U.S. over there. Everybody understand that? Unjust. Okay. From there. Nobody can hear you, y'all. Stop. Then they make them take out a loan if they can't afford the, the uh, products that they sell back to them. Right. They'll say, uh, well, of course, wheat costs a penny in America. Why does wheat cost $20 U.S. for a grain right. over in Africa? And it, would be, and, it, and it would be like cocoa and all that. That would be their resource. Mm -hmm. They'll extract it from them, then charge them extra for it, and they can't pay it. Then make them take out a loan. Exactly. That's how the nation's going down. Mm-hmm. Foreign policy. Yep. Read seven again. I'm it sorry, we didn't read that yet, but go ahead. Yes, sir. Verse seven. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. Mm -hmm. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell. So now this represents how Esau brings death and hell wherever they go. Go ahead. And hell followed with him. Go ahead. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Put the fourth part of the earth. Read that, Yuri. An astonishing epic of global discovery, imperial ambition, and the birth of America. The fourth part of the world. So America is the fourth part of the earth. So read, go back and read it again. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth mm -hmm. to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, give me that article that Malachi read this earlier in his class, Deacon Malachi, but I want to read it again. Watch how America deals with nations. Read this that. Is, this is the Business Insider. WikiLeaks, U.S. fought to lower minimum wage in Haiti. The United States sought to lower minimum wage in Haiti. Go ahead. So Hanes and Levi's would stay cheap. So that you could buy Hanes and Levi's for cheap over here. Go ahead. At oh, June 3rd, 2011, mm -hmm. a WikiLeaks post published on The Nation shows that the Obama administration Obama! They said he was about black Moses. What did Obama do that everybody loved? Go ahead. Fought to keep Haitian wages at 31 cents an hour. You see that? 31 cents an hour. Good old America, democracy. That's why God said the vile person shall no longer speak villainy. That's why that Edomite woman, the ugly woman, said that she voted for him. <laughs> he was a tool. Read. This article was taken down by the nation due to an embargo. This article was taken down. They had to repost it because America didn't want this to get out. Go ahead. But it was excerpted 
at Columbia Journalism Review. Mm, come it, on. It started when Haiti passed a law two years ago, raising its minimum wage to 61 cents an hour. So Haiti raised the minimum wage. They said, hey, yeah. can we at least have 61 cent an hour? Y'all got to do the math on that. Who can survive on 61 cents an they, hour? They're not looking at what that means. Because if you increase the wage for them to make the product, that cuts into the white man's profits. Exactly. Yes. To exploit the people's labor. Mm -hmm. And you want to know why? Why is Haiti so jacked up? Why is Haiti so poor? America is behind it. Keep her poor. Read it again. It started when Haiti passed a law two years ago raising its minimum wage to 61 cents an hour, according to an NBC cable. Go ahead. This infuriated American corporations like Haynes and Levi Strauss. This and this pissed white folks right. off. Huh? Y'all got to see this. And that really translates to pennies over here. Yes. And that pissed them off. Mm -hmm. Bishop, that equals 20. If you work a regular 40 hour week, that's $24 a week. $24 a week, U.S. Wow. Boy, ain't no way. Boy. Read that again. This infuriated American corporations like Haynes and Levi Strauss that pay Haitian slave wages to sew their clothes. So there's no machine. To, 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 they're doing this by hand. By hand. Go ahead. They said they will only fork over a seven cent an hour increase. Do you hear this? Wow. Go ahead. And, and they got the State Department involved. Wow. So you would think companies like Levi Strauss and all that have no influence. No, these people run the world. These are billion dollar companies. This ain't no little uh, chump change companies. And with the money that they with, and with the money that they save rather than than to pay these people a proper wage, I put quotes around that, mm -hmm. is so that they can bump up their advertisement to make you think that they're all just. They put billions of dollars, which which is a very small Pennies. part of Haynes. Right. Haynes, Haynes and Levi. And Levi. Mm -hmm. they, got, they got big money that they put inside the brainwashing ads to make you think that they're humanitarian and all that other stuff. Meanwhile, they are, they are fighting for seven daggone cents. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, you can't have that. Right. You, we're over here, I'll say we're. Over here with our Levi jeans, thinking everything is cool. Exactly. But on the other side of the world, they're keeping our brothers, the tribe of Levi, at a low degraded state. Damn. Democracy. That is democracy. Imperialism. Read it again. They got to scroll up. They said they would only fork over a seven cent an hour increase. And they got the State Department involved. The U.S. ambassador put pressure on Haiti's president, who duly carved out a $3 a day minimum wage for textile companies. The U.S. minimum wage, which itself is very low, works out to $58 a day. Mm -hmm. Haiti has about 25,000 garment workers. By, remember, by hand. Go ahead. If you pay each of them $2 a day more, it will cost their employers $50,000 per working day, or about... $12.5 million a year. As of last year, Haynes had 3,200 Haitians making t-shirts for it. Paying each of them two bucks a day, what, two bucks a day more, would cost it about $1.6 million a year. Haynes Brands Incorporated made $211 million on $4.3 billion in sales last year. Yes, that right there tells you that a portion of that was used to put the campaigns out there to lullaby us to sleep. Mm -hmm. and, a, and remember, go ahead, read that last sentence. Thanks to U.S. intervention, the minimum wage was raised only to 31 cents. Yes, yeah, so that's what we read in Isaiah 32. That's what we read in Revel read Revelation 6 and 6 again. Because remember, one of the chief things was clothing, right? Wouldn't we read that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. America has been very unjust. They have hurt the oil and the wine. 
nations, our people are suffering because of the injustice being done to them by the United States of America. Okay, everybody understand that? Give me Leviticus 19.13. Here's God's law. Leviticus chapter 19. Can I get it first, please? Thank I you. I apologize, Bishop. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 13. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him the right, way. Right, right. Listen good to this. Go ahead. Neither rob him the wages of him that is hired. Is America guilty of that? Yes. Yes, America. Read it again. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Neither rob him the wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So America is going to have to pay for this. So this is just one law of many laws. Okay, Malachi 3 and 5. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Levi Strauss. I remember them pants. Some of y'all got them on right now. Quality, trade, look at the, the, the sharecroppers or farming. Yep. What'd you say? I can't hear you. Oh, they're pulling the pants apart. Right. That's that image there. Thank you. Those are slaves, right? Give me a Malachi 3 and 5. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 5. Wait, let me get it. Wait, 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 wait. I'm slow. All right. God, just go. Just go. Go. And I will come near to you, and I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages. Wait, I want y'all to understand that verse. Read it again. Now, this was God talking to the Israelites. You think if he did this to his people, because we're suffering for it, breaking it, here comes America, and God we trust, they're breaking the same law. Read it again. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. America got sorcerers here. And against the adulterers. America got adulterers. Go ahead. And against false swearers. America's a false swearer. And against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. We just saw that with Levi Strauss. We just read that. And this is the Congo. They got women and children mining for minerals. But here in America, they got big machines. Over there, they got, this is our people. Read it again, read it again, read it again. I just love the way this, I, I love it. Come on. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages the widow and the fatherless and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me saith the lord of hosts america does not fear the lord right hey could you put it back on where those kids was my, where, the, where they had our people mining for minerals now that's over in that's in the congo, congo. right mm -hmm. now you might ask yourself why is it that they're not using machinery just to show you how low down this vicious beast is it will cost them money Right, right. To put fuel and oil in the tractors and so forth. So we'd rather use their labor where we don't have to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because they can get their Humvees over there when they go to war. They can bring their military tanks and all that. They put all kind of gas, got tanker trucks running all over the place yep. to keep that stuff going. But when it comes to this here, they said we don't give them nothing. To... First of all, they shouldn't be there. I'm just making a point to show you how low down this vicious bastard is. <laughs> So that's it, Bishop. No, that was it. So now, I, wanna, I don't want to forget the thought. Remember the three reasons people, nations go to war, brothers, what are they? Politics, economics, and Christianity, religion. Correct. So now we're dealing with our religion. We just dealt with the economic growth, stable economy, that everybody wants that. But we don't get that. Three, a religion now, Christianity. The religion we're referring to is Christianity. Matthew 7, 13, please. Matthew 7, 13, please. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, 
and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Let's see one of the wide gates he said don't not go. The World, wide gates. Go ahead, read it. World's major religion. These are the wide gates that many people go to. Read. Christianity. How many people they got? 2.56 billion. Billions of people. Go ahead. <laughs> Islam. Two billions. Islam's the second largest religion. Go ahead. Hinduism. Uh -huh. 1.2 billion. Go ahead. Buddhism, mm -hmm. 500 million. Uh -huh. Ju Judaism, 14.3 million. Now let's read the verse again. Enter ye in at the straight gate. So the straight gate, brothers, is God's commandments. Israel keeping God's commandments. That's right. right. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So if you are in Christianity, you're, you're being led to destruction. If you're in Islam, you're being led to destruction. If you're in Hinduism, you're being led to destruction. If you're in Buddhism, you're being led to destruction. If you're in Judaism, you're being led to destruction. This is war! That's right. Did you finish that verse? And many there be which go in there at. That's your mothers, your fathers, your sisters, your brothers. Second Ezra 8 and 1. Second Ezra chapter 8 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And he answered me saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. You see that? This world that we're living in right now is made for many. Because you've got many nations ruling. But the world to come for few. Because that's only the 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody that's understand that? Right. Read on. I will tell thee a similar to Ezra. I'm going to tell you a similar to. I'm going to give you a comparison. An allegory. A parable. Go ahead. As when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made. So there's a lot of mold wherein earthen vessels are made. Go ahead. But little dust that gold cometh of. So compared to the mold, which is earth, gold is like small dust in comparison in size. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. Even so is the course of this present world. Even so is the course of this present world. Go ahead. He's going to explain the next verse. There be many created. There be many created. But few shall be saved. But few shall be saved. That few is Israel. Okay. Right. Get Matthew 20 and 16. Matthew chapter 20, verse 16. So the last shall be first and the first last. Mm -hmm. For many be called, but few chosen. There's only few being chosen, brothers and sisters. Few chosen. Okay. From there, give me Matthew 24, 4 and 5, please. We're still talking about religion. Christianity is the religion mainly that we're focusing on, though it includes also Islam. But America is a Christian nation. France England, these are Christian nations, allegedly. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Man, the many is talking about the white man, talking about Esau, Edom. They came saying that they are Christ, and they deceived the whole world. Everybody right. understand that? 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Because the, the next statement is always, it doesn't matter what he looks like. It only matters his message. Here's how you kill that thought, that stupid black thought. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. The one that came preaching another Jesus was the so-called white man. Go ahead. Whom we have not preached. You got to start challenging men and women. Where in the Bible? Did Christ and the apostles teach about a pink skin Jesus Christ with long, thin hair? I want to read book, chapter, and verse. Go ahead, read again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, mm -hmm. or if ye receive another spirit. Because what comes with another Jesus? Another spirit comes with it. Go ahead. Which ye have not received, mm -hmm. or another gospel. What comes with another Jesus? Another spirit and another gospel. I want y'all to see them three things that come with a fake Jesus. Another spirit and another gospel comes with it. So people say it doesn't matter what he looked. Oh, yes, it does. They gave you a false Jesus. That means they gave you a false spirit on you. 
which means they put a false gospel throughout the earth. Does everybody understand that? Read one more again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. The only way we bear with them is by teaching, rebuking them in the name of the Lord. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Revelation, please, 13, 14. And give me on Wikipedia, uh, type in head of Jesus, head of Christ. Yeah, go ahead. When, you, when we was looking at those pastors, those so-called white pastors that were standing up and you seen all the hundreds of thousands of people standing around them. Right. Just think for a second that all the wealth that these people have mm -hmm. came from us being in slavery. And nobody's addressing that. Mm -hmm. You really got to think about that sometimes. This country would not have nothing if they had not enslaved and raped and pillaged and robbed the hell out of us. Right. So that means everywhere you look is basically our property. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bishop. I, Read I, that. It just hit me in the head. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. By the means of those miracles. The miracles, it goes back to verse, thir read 13 so we get it in context. Verse 13. Context. Go and ahead. he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Go ahead. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, uh -huh. which he had power to do. In the sight of the beast. The beast with seven heads. That's the European allies. Go ahead. Saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the womb by a sword and did live. So make an image to the beast, which had a womb by the sword and did live. Which the image goes back to Rome. Put it on the screen. Read that. The head of Christ, also called the Solomon head, is a 1940 portrait. What year? 1940. 1940 was World War II. And, and in 45 is when they dropped the atom bomb. Go ahead. It's a 1940 portrait painting of Jesus of Nazareth by American artist Warner Salmon, mm -hmm. 1892 to 1968, as an extraordinarily successful work of Christian popular devotional art. It had been reproduced over half a billion times mm -hmm. worldwide. By the end of the 20th century, enlarged copies of the work have been made for churches and small pocket or wallet sized prayer cards bearing the image have been mass produced for private devotional use. Mm. The painting is said to have become the basis for the visual visualization of Jesus for hundreds of millions of people. Mm. Ah. Raise it up, raise it up. This is how I want to show you something. I want let me look for the, the, the part. About the war. Where is it? Uh, 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 Second verse. Where is it? Okay, right there. Okay. The Baptist. Baptist bookstore initially popularized the painting, distributing various size lithographic images for sale throughout the southern United States. The Salvation Army and the YMCA, as members of the USO, handed out pocket-sized versions of the painting to American servicemen heading overseas during World War II. So this image was popular during World War II. Read it. Now go back to what the Bible said again. Revelation, Revelation 13. What verse was that? Verse 14. 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, mm -hmm. saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So this image comes from Rome. Caesar Borgia came, that image of Caesar Borgia comes from Rome. He's the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Does everybody understand that? All right, give me our Sirach 12 and 10. Yeah, put it on the screen. Yes, yes, I always forget about this. These are the sketches by, of Leonardo da Vinci of Caesar Borgia as the Renaissance image of Christ, the new image of Christ. This is what Putin said, this was all lies. Yeah. Putin, President Vladimir Putin, yeah. 
This was all lies. And he was a part of that great conspiracy too. Ecclesiastes, yes, put that on the screen, please. No, give me the next one. Give me the next one. Give me the next one, Alicia. There's another one. There's another one. I like this one, but there's another one. With the crown of thorns. Crown of thorns. All right, just put it on the screen. Put this on the, on the screen in the meanwhile. And Yuri, can you read that at the bottom? Yes, sir. Bust of the Savior posed for by Caesar Borgia. So that's the evidence. We prove all things. Right. We ain't bearing false witness. We ain't lying. That fake image of Jesus is Caesar Borgia. Did you find it, Alicia, yet? What? Salvatore in it. Can you zoom in? No, no. I want from that book. From that book. Hey, somebody talk. I'll look. That's it. They got it. That's, That's it, it right there. Thank you. That's it right there. Zoom in on the face. See the crown of thorns? Now when we go down, right, that's the crown of thorns on his head. Raise it up to the word so we can see what it says in the book. Read that. The original of this bust was found in the church of San Salvatore uh -huh. in Termis, now destroyed. It is an open secret that Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it. Do y'all see that? So we ain't lying. There's books on this. Let's go on back. Sirach 12 and 10. So don't trust Vladimir Putin. Watch what God says. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12 and verse 10. Mm. Never trust thine enemy. That's what read it again. Never trust thine enemy. All right, you been understand that? Never. Can somebody tell these Negroes that? Never trust thine enemy. They ain't learned our lesson yet. Leave it up to them. We'll be in slavery another 400 years. The hell is this? Give me 2nd Ezra 16. So... Insurrections going to come against the 12 tribes of Israel, against men and women that teach. Revelation 12, 17, one more time so y'all get your thought right. Watch this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Listen good. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. This dragon, this white man is going to be mad with us, pissed off. Civil war. Go ahead. And went to make war. Civil war. With the remnant of her seed. So that war, civil war, insurrection against God's people. Go ahead. Which keep the commandments of God. Which keep the commandments of God. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Give me a second Ezra 16 and 40. Pay close attention. Pay close attention. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 40. Mm -hmm. Oh my people. Oh my people. Hear my word. Watch this. Make you ready to the battle. You men, you women, make you ready to the battle. There's going to be insurrection against us. The Bible says make you ready to the battle. Go ahead. And in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Be ready to up and go when need be. Everybody understand that? That's what it's saying. Read. He that selleth let him be as he that fleeth away, mm -hmm. and he that buyeth as one that will lose. Mm. He that occupieth merchandise as he that hath no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. From there, give me 2 Timothy 2 and 3. 2 Timothy 2 and 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So we got to understand that hardness is going to come. You thought paying your bills was the hardness? No, it's going more, far beyond that. It's even going to the point of insurrection against us. Like we like, everybody like to talk about bills and all that. You're arguing with your wife, but that that's not really what it's talking about. Read it again. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's why I said in Ezra's make you ready to the battle. Go ahead. No man that warreth. What's that word? Warreth. Did we just read in Revelation 12, 17, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make what? War. war. Read that again. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Don't get caught up in the affairs of this life. The foolishness that go, the Christmas, the Easter, 
the mama's day, your, your wedding anniversary, that way if you forget, she mad at you. All that stupidity. Don't get caught up in the affairs of this life. Now, even that P. Diddy stuff, don't get caught up in this foolishness. Read again. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. The Lord calls us all to be soldiers. You men understand that? Right. Not sitting in a, sitting and being a little Sunday school boy choir. The <laughs> hell is this? We are soldiers. From there, give me Philippians. 127. Philippians. Philippians. Chapter 1. Verse 27. Verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. You know what is so heavy? We got to train ourselves to become like that. Read it again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That's something that does not happen overnight. That comes through studying, praying, and applying. Read it again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, right. that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. Stay fast in one spirit? With one mind. With what? Well, with one mind. With one mind. One spirit, one mind. Go ahead. Striving together. Striving what? Together. That word together translates to unity. That's right. That word together translates to unity. Go ahead. Striving together for the faith of of the gospel. We can accomplish more together than we can divide it. Do you men understand that? But Esau said divide them up. Yeah. Divide them up uh, religiously. We got to, everybody got a different religion. Everybody got a different political group. Everybody got a different nationality. The Lord's bringing us up back into one nation, one race, That's one right. God, one faith, one baptism. That's what he's doing. So when you separate, I'm going to do my own thing. You're a dummy. And you're going to lose this battle. Read it again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, mm. that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. One spirit? With one mind. With one mind? Striving together. Striving together? For the faith of the gospel. Now watch this. Go ahead. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries and in nothing are we to be terrified by the enemies of god that's right don't be terrified for nothing because they're going to try and instill fear in us you're going to lose your job you're going to lose your home you're going to lose this you're going to lose that you're going to you're going to go to prison right read it again verse read that again and in nothing terrified by your adversaries mm -hmm. Which is to them an evident token of perdition. They're going to say, if God was with them, God would not allow them to go through what we're putting them through. Incarceration, losing their jobs, families disrupted. Read that again. Which is to them an evident token of perdition. Read. But to you of salvation. Why? Why? Because we know it's prophecy. That's we know right. it's prophecy. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. And that of God. Read. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, watch this, but also to suffer for his sake. So we have to suffer for his sake. That's what is written. I don't know what these churches are talking about. The Bible says we must suffer for the Lord's sake. Go ahead. Having the same conflict which he saw in me mm -hmm. and now here to be in me. Give me 2 Thessalonians 1. I don't know what these churches are talking about. They don't know the Bible. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 4. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 4. Uh -huh. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God mm. for your patience and faith in all your persecutions. Y'all see this? In all your persecutions, God. And tribulations. And tribulations. That ye endure. So not only during the time of Paul, where the church is suffering persecution and tribulation, that translates to what's going to happen in these last days. I need you men, I need you women to understand that. Don't be in la-la land. Oh, everything's so hunky-dory. Go ahead. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. So our being persecuted, going through tribulation, is a manifest token, a sign of the righteous judgment of God. Go ahead. 
that ye may be counted worthy Whoa. of Read that again. That ye may be counted worthy of what? Of the kingdom of God, uh -huh. for which ye also suffer. So do you want to be counted worthy, brothers? Yes, then we must suffer for Christ's sake. That's what it's saying. Read it again. I need it to sink in brothers' minds. Which is a manifest token of the righteous no, no, judgment you gotta of the God. Verse. verse five. Verse oh, five. that is five. I'm yes, sorry. Sir. Start at four again and read them quick. Yes, sir. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Come on. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. So we all want to be counted worthy. We all want to be counted worthy. He says then you must go through persecution and tribulation for Christ's sake. Does everybody understand that? Yes, understand that this is war. We are being prepared for the coming battle, okay? Which is insurrection against God's chosen people. Read on. Verse six, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's a righteous thing when God brings tribulation on the other nations. That's, That's right. why Christ said, pray for vengeance, pray for vengeance. Pray for vengeance. Read it again. See, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's righteous when God brings down destruction on the ADL, SPLC, the United States of America, uh, Gaza, the so-called Israel over there. It's a righteous thing because all nations had their hand coming against us. Read. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And that's what we got to convince our people. Our people are oppressed. They know they're in trouble. They, they're going through troubles. So we got to say what? Read it again. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. We must convince them, persuade them, rest with us. Come into this truth. Go ahead. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Come on. In flaming fire, taking vengeance taking on what? them. What's that word? Vengeance uh -huh. on them. That know not God. That's right, read. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction mm. from the presence of the Lord. Why don't the churches read this? This is the New Testament. Go ahead. And from the glory of his power. Come on. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. When he, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. That's us. Go ahead. You and me. Go ahead. And to be admired in all them that believe. Mm. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So do we believe this testimony? Yes. We believe this testimony. Come on. Wherefore also we pray always for you mm. that our God would count you worthy of this calling. Mm. So we got to be got counted worthy of this calling in the, of this truth. Go ahead. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness mm -hmm. in the work of faith with power. That's right. Come on. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me First Thessalonians 2. First Thessalonians 2. Bring it and we want to start at 14. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which is which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. That's right. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen. So they were suffering too. Go ahead. Even as they have of the Jews. Which was our wicked people. Go ahead. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Our people killed Christ and their own prophets. Go ahead. And have persecuted us. And our people have persecuted us, go ahead. And they please not God. And they what, read it again? And they please not God. Mm. And are contrary to all men. What they do, what they do, what they do, go ahead. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. So these Gentiles are Israelites scattered worldwide. So you got our people that, no, don't go over there and teach, stop waking them up to this truth. Bring them into Islam, bring them into Christianity. Why are you bringing them into keeping the commandments as Israelites? Read that again, verse 16. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, mm -hmm. to fill up their sins always. To fill up their sins always. Go ahead. For the wrath is come upon them mm -hmm. to the uttermost. Read. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, 
endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. So Paul is letting the Thessalonians know they couldn't see them for a while. Sometimes brothers and sisters on the other side of the world, we can't get to them all the time. Brothers got jobs. We got to try to work between that until the Lord changed things up. Okay. So that we can go there cons consistently. But until that, like Paul said, read it again. But we brethren being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Right. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once, uh, once and again. But Satan hindered us. You see that? Satan, that's Rome, hindered him. Rome was hindering his travels, okay? Give me Ephesians 6 and 11. Make you ready to this battle. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God, mm. that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Can we look up that word wiles? Put on the whole armor of God. That's why I said make you ready to the battle. That's why I said endure hardness as a good what? Soldier. This is war. That's right. Let's zoom in. I can barely see that thing. Put it on the screen. Read that. Wild, devious, or cunning stratagems mm. employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. Let's look at some uh, similar words. Tricks, ruses, ploys, schemes, dodges, maneuvers, gambits, subterfuges, cunning stratagems, artifices, devices, contrivances, guile, artfulness, art, cunning, craftiness. Now, another word for guile. Y'all see that word devices? Write down that word devices and cunning strategies. Stratagem is strategy. Because generally, brothers pick out the first word, tricks. Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. But when you look at the, the words devices, maneuvers, cunning strategies, it's more to it. It's more than just a trick. Watch, give me that one in Corinthians. I forgot where it is. Uh, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Give me that one. 2 Corinthians 2 and 10. Read that. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse, verse uh, let me hear it. 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, wait a minute. What is he talking? What is he talking about in context? Read verse 10. Verse 10. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ. Go ahead. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So one of Satan's devices, one of his wiles is lack of forgiveness for your neighbor. If you're, and guess what? Look, guess what? Your neighbor must repent. Some say, oh, I forgive, I forgive him or her, and they ain't asked for repentance for nothing. They're giving you the middle finger. Okay? So read that again. Let's, the whole thing, Bishop? Yes. Yes, sir. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it for your sakes, Forgave I it in the person of Christ, mm -hmm. lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So one of his devices, one of his strategy is not forgiving. I know what you're thinking. Didn't Christ say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do? What is Christ? Who is he going to destroy first when he returns? Those same people. Hey, hey, give me that revelation. I'm going to show you. Revelation 1 is a 7. Yes, sir. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Watch what you're going to do. Watch this. Watch this. Pay attention. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. So the first ones he going to get are them people around the cross that killed him. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, right? They didn't repent. Nope. They're going to get destroyed. <laughs> Everybody understand that? From there, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Ephesians 6, 11, one more again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So this whole armor, this whole armor, here's a precept. 
Mm, Romans 13, I think it's 11. Romans 13. Mm, start at 12. Romans chapter 13 and verse 12. Watch this, watch this. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You see that? Let us put on the armor of light. He's going to tell you what it is. Watch, read on. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not doing what? Not in rioting mm. and drunkenness. Mm. Not in chambering mm. and wantonness. That's all lust and sexuality and partying. Go ahead. Not in strife mm -hmm. and envying. Now watch this. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. When you put that spirit on, that's putting on the whole armor. That means learn the whole Bible. Some of you learn in prophecies. But you ain't learning about thou shalt not covet. And you're the ones caught up in scams and schemes and stealing from your neighbor. Some of you are reading about prophecy and not learning about thou shalt not commit adultery. And you're committing a, uh, fornication. Some of you are dealing with trainees. Some of you are in homosexual uh, 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 entanglements. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to think of some nice words. So that's put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't keep just a little bit of sin in your back pocket. Don't keep just a little bit of sin. Making provision for the flesh is like, you know you're lusting after your neighbor's uh, wife. You can see her on Facebook. You still got her number. Why are you holding her number? Let it go. Don't make provision for the flesh. You know you're struggling with porn. Why are you keeping the website in your uh, phone somewhere? Hidden. Delete that thing. Let's go back to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Mm. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Come on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Some of you thought the fight was against Obama. It ain't against him. Because when Obama left office, who took his place? What's the dude's name? Trump. Was it Bush or Trump? Trump, Trump? Trump. He followed many of the same things that was already laid out. From president to president to president, these are managers. These are managers. They are not the leaders. The elites are the leaders behind the scenes. Like we read about Levi. Right. Them corporations that you think is nobody, they have great influence. Read it again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It ain't against flesh and blood. Because when that man or that woman is moved out of office, somebody else takes their place to fulfill the same role. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. But against principalities, mm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Everybody understand it? There's spiritual wickedness in high places that manipulates, controls, Rulers that controls leaders that control controls presidents, vice presidents, senators, congressmen, governors, and mayors, so forth and so on. There's spirits in those seats. Go ahead. And spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So he repeats his wherefore, because of this, learn the whole Bible. Study the whole Bible. Go ahead that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, mm. and having done all to stand. Why does it say in having done all to stand? Because sometimes you do all you can, sometimes you, stop, you fall, you stumble. But guess what you got to do? Get back up. That's right. Never stay down. The only time you lose is when you stay down. Right. When you decide to give up the war, give up the fight, give up the battle. That's when you've lost. Everybody understand that? Read it again. Read it again, verse 13. I just like that. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You know I says, put on the whole armor, because sometimes we don't know ourselves. I always tell y'all the story. I always say, I'm not, I'm not a covetous brother. I don't have that spirit. But one day, I'm at work. There was a robbery. The thieves left dollar, $100 bills all on the floor in a little room. And it was me the manager of the store, and all these $100 bills. And she went to answer the phone. 
And I'm looking. You know, I happen to look up at the cameras. I'm looking for cameras. Then the thought said, why are you looking for cameras? You have the devil. You have the devil on you. You got to realize why you're doing this. Oh, shoot. I never thought I was covetous. But somewhere back there, that little bit is still there. So I said to check myself. Now, outside, there was a, a, a police officer. She was doing a um, police report. She had just came back from maternity leave. Just had a baby. She put in her pocket one pacifier. Boop. So when we pulled the film, the records, I, not IRS, what's the name? The, the Internal Affairs. Internal Affairs saw her on video steal one pacifier that cost 99 cents. She was making $70,000 a year. She lost her job over a 99 cent pacifier. You know what's harmful about that? When y'all, y'all, when y'all was going through the tape, y'all were not looking for that. Exactly, exactly. You're looking for something else totally. Mm-hmm. And boop, was that? Whoa, 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 back that up. What did we miss? Yep. And all everything zoops. And right the bosses were there looking. What is uh, officer so-and-so doing? Zoom in! Yep. She takes the pacifier, puts it in the shirt. Covetousness. That one little thing cost her her job. And she just came back from maternity leave. You can't make this stuff up. Study the whole Bible. Why? Because what you think you got, you strong in? No. Mm-mm, Satan will come, he'll come. I got another one. I got another, one. Got another story. Want to hear it? Here you go. Brother's sitting on the bus. He, he is, I'm going to show you Satan. It's not a trick. It's strategy. Yes. Cunning strategy. Him and his wife arguing. They ain't had sex in a while. He's sitting on the bus, going to work. Mm. Bus stops, the next bus stop. Who comes on the bus? Pretty young, pretty sister. The kind he has in his mind. That's built the way he likes them. Hourglass shape. No makeup, her face was flawless. She sits right across from him. She's staring at him. He's staring at her. She's staring at him. He's staring at her. She's saying things like, what's your name? You look buff. Now the brother is 100 pounds. She's telling him how handsome and how big and strong he look. Stop the cap. Yeah. This is strategy. When did it come? When he's arguing with her. They just had a fight about not having sex. I'm tired. I got a headache. Ah. Now comes... The cleanup woman. Now he's in an entanglement. So you didn't see that coming? That's the type of woman you always dreamed about. Now she's interested in you, a hundred pounds soaking wet. Telling you you got a six pack, and you ain't got a six pack. Your muscles hang below your arm and just flatten. You got five teeth missing in your mouth. Oh my God. But she made him think. He was God's gift to the world. Strategy. Right time, right person. You got to understand, it's not a trick, it's strategy. Read it again, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, Mm -hmm. and having done all, to stand. Because sometimes you do fall, but you better get back up. That's right. Satan ain't coming at you with the pork chop, well, some of you piggly wigglies, and maybe that's your thing. But most of us have passed the pork. Yes, sir. It's other things he's coming with. The other pea. The other what? The other oh, the other pea? Not, Not the pork. It's the punani. <laughs> that thing right there. That's how we come. And he's going to set it up where you got an attitude with her, she got an attitude with you. Said, oh, it's the right day, the right time in the year. Look at him. Look at him. He think he's strong. Watch this. Watch this. Here, Satan. Watch, watch, watch. Watch. I got a set up already. I know what he like. He be looking at porn every other night. I know exactly what he like. Hey, hey, Bishop, sometimes it doesn't even got to be that your wife ain't giving you sex. Sometimes it could be your wife is sick. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. she's in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't deal with her sexually. That's right. You know, so Satan going to make your wife get sick and, and put, what's the word you use? Trickery? What? 
um, you're gonna set up strategy strategies. Devices. Yeah. To to make to try to take you out. It's serious like that. Mm -hmm. We are war brothers. Yep. And y'all know it work. The the women at work. Hey, Ray, how many women got a job in here? Raise your hand. Show them women. Nine out of ten of them. There's a work husband. There's a brother on the job that's always in her face. <laughs> they laughing because they know. Now they want to put the hand down. <laughs> but it's true. There's a work husband. And he's talking to her. He might be getting her lunch. It's true. It's real. I remember at work, a true story. I had to catch myself. I caught myself. I had a partner. Her name, I'll just say, her name was T. I'll just say T. Mm -hmm. Oh, Israel close is dirty. We got, it says, we going to change. Take them off. Give them to me. Give them to me. I'm giving my, my uniform. She washing my clothes. And I'm, at first, I didn't think nothing of it. And then the guys on the job said, hey, where's your uniform? I said, T's washing it. She's washing your clothes. What the hell is this? You know? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I said, you right. <laughs> Give me them damn clothes back. Get her back. <laughs> Here's another one. Here's another one. 9-11. Uh, that door was about to open all the way. 9-11, another female partner. We was working 14, 16 hours a day. Yeah. And it was a hotel. And the hotel gave, they gave to us. Right. All of the, the, the cops that was in the area, mm -hmm. they get, I had room, what was it? Like 216 was my room number. Mm -hmm. Our room number. Yeah. One bed. You on your break. Go lay down, take a rest. And I'm, and I'm looking at her, I said, oh, she's kind of good looking. She's going, come on, lay down, ain't nothing going to happen. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> no, no. I said, I will stay awake. Because right along with the work husband is a work wife. Right there. Where we at, Yuri? Don't get me off topic. Where we at? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That's right. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That's right. And having done all to stand. And having done all to stand. We got to stand. Come on. Stand therefore, mm -hmm. having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. So what is our loins talking about? First Peter's 1.13, please. We're coming back here, Yuri. Don't drop it. Having your loins girt about with truth. What is the loins making reference to? First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind, brothers and sisters. Get your minds right. Strengthen your minds. Was that it, Yuri? Be sober mm -hmm. and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's go back. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Come on. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now verse 15 is important. And your feet shod. Because once you got on the whole armor... And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Write this down. Be ready, willing, and able to go. Be ready, willing, and able. You need your feet shod with the gospel of peace. That's right. Be willing, be ready, willing, and able to go travel to teach this gospel. It's more than just going. Going to the corners is fine. But our nation is big. The nation of our people is worldwide, not just on the corner around the block. It's not about so much just preaching to the camera. That's fine, but it's more to it than that. Exactly. Get Romans 10, 15, please. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? How shall they preach except they be sent? The word apostle means sent. To be sent out. Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. How beautiful are, are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Was that it, Yuri? And bring glad tidings of good things. And bring glad tidings of good things. We're going worldwide. You're more than you've been taught. You're the Israelites the Bible speaks of. You're the people of Moses, the people of Solomon, the people of Christ. They got to hear that. They get Proverbs. It's 25, 25. Give me that. I think about cool water. Cold water. Watch this. Proverbs 
chapter 25, verse 25. Mm. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Do y'all hear that? That far wick is coming from here. That's right. Coming from here, America, coming from Europe. Those are the two countries that's we're going out traveling. And when our people in these other countries hear it, they say that's like cold water. That cool, refreshing drink. That's some high quality H2O. Give me Nahum 115. Nahum. Watch this. Nahum chapter 1, verse 15. Mm. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. So that's you men, you brothers, you teachers, you preachers. Read it again. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, mm -hmm. that publisheth peace. That's right. O Judah, mm. keep thy solemn feasts, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. So he's already going to be cut off, but that comes through us going upon the mountains, okay? Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace. That's our job. That's our mission. Everybody understand that? And it's saying Judah because it started with Judah. That's for another class, though. You know, you could go to Deuteronomy 33, Genesis 49, but we ain't going there today. Give me Ezekiel 37, 10. Judah, 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 Judah. Ezekiel 37, 10. No other kingdom, y'all stepping your game up, and I'm proud of you. That's right. Ezekiel 37, 10. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 10. Mm. So I prophesied as he commanded me, mm -hmm. and the breath came into them. So we're waking up, we're waking up, we're waking up. Go ahead. And they lived mm. and stood up upon their feet, mm. an exceeding great army. So this That's army right. is the same one put on the whole armor of God. This army is the same one endure hardness as a good soldier. This army is said in Ezra's prepare for the battle. You men understand that? Oh, watch this. Why Exodus? Give me Exodus 12. I'm going to show you to the extent it's going to get to. Because right now we see the numbers. This ain't nothing, Bishop. This ain't nothing. Yes, sir. Exodus 12, 51. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 51. Watch what the Lord calls us. And it came to pass the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. What is he going to buy our armies? By their armies. Read it again. By their armies. I want y'all to see the level that this truth is going to get to. Give me our uh, numbers two. Numbers chapter two, one to three. Numbers chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Numbers chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard. Pitch by his own standard. Y'all see the standards along the walls there? These are standards. Every tribe had a flag, had a standard with their symbol that symbolized their family, their tribe. Read it again. Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the inside of their father's house. So Benjamin stood by Benjamin. Judah was by Judah. Ephraim was by Ephraim. Reuben was by Reuben. Zebulon was by Zebulon. Do you see this? Every tribe was by their standard. Go ahead. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. Watch this. And on the east side. Toward, and on the east side. Toward the rising of the sun. Shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies? So Judah was on the east side. Go ahead. And throughout their armies. Uh -huh. And Nashon, Go ahead. the son of Amenadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. Now we're just going to jump down because it goes into Zebulon and Issachar being beside Judah on either side. Give me verse. Yeah, this is order. Man, I love that. That's order. Mm -hmm. I love order, man. I love it. I love it. And we're going to get to that too. Read verse 10. Verse 10. On the standard side shall Every, be... Verse 10. Yes, sir. Verse Numbers two, 2 and 10. Yes. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben. That's right. Go ahead. According to their armies. And the captain of the children of Reuben 
shall be Eliza, the no, son hey, take, of Shador. Take so, it easy with that. Yeah, he you, put all yeah, that yeah, power take, in that take one. Take it easy, brother. I'm sorry, take Deacon, it I'm sorry. Easy. I'm sorry, Deacon. So on the south side, you had Reuben. And on the other side, you had Gad and Simeon. Okay? Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. I mean, yeah, yeah, 17. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites. Where were they? In the midst of the camp. So Levi was in the midst of the camp. Go ahead. As they encamp, so shall they set forward every man in his place by their standards. Mm, that's right. That's right. Read verse 18. On the west side. Now on the west side. Shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim. So Ephraim was on the west side. Go ahead. According to their armies. Mm -hmm. And the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama, mm -hmm. the son of Amihud. From there, jump to verse 25. Verse 25. Why are you skipping 22? Oh, tw you want to read 22? Okay, read 22. Verse 22. Then the tribe of Benjamin. <laughs> That's the, right, that's right. You are Benjamin was with Ephraim. Ephraim and Manasseh. Go ahead. And the captain of the sons of Benjamin mm. shall be Abaddon. And Abaddon, the son of Gideoni. That's right. Jump down to verse uh, 25, please. Verse 25. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side. So on the north side, you had Dan. And he had Asher and Naphtali. Go ahead. By their armies, mm -hmm. and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahizer, That's the right. son of Amashadai. So now let's go back to Ephesians. So brothers, we got to be ready. We got to be willing. We got to be able. How many of you got, how many of you do not have passports? Raise your hand. What y'all waiting for? In order to do this work, you must be able. You could be ready, you could be willing, but if you ain't got what you need to get here and there, what, what, what y'all doing? So, where we at, Alicia? I mean, Yuri? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of uh -huh. peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Give me, hold that. Give me Romans 10, 17. Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Mm -hmm. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We all want to increase our faith. Read it again. So then faith cometh by hearing. We got to consistently hear the word of God. Get the word of God deep down in our spirit, in our minds, in our soul. That's right. That comes by hearing. Go ahead. And hearing by the word of God. That's how your faith gets increased. Go back. No, give me all 1 Timothy 4.13. I'm sorry. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. That's right. Till I come, give attendance to reading. Get till I come, give attendance to reading. Go ahead. To exhortation. To exhortation. To doctrine. To doctrine. So Paul said consistently read the scriptures. That's how your faith gets increased. That's right. That's why we say do four chapters a day. Minimum. Minimum. Go back. Where, where you at? Verse 16. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, read that again. Thank you, sir. First mm -hmm. Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Bring Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Mm. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. You want your profiting to appear? Give thyself to what? A tennis to read it. Now read on, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself, and unto thy and Examine unto the doctrine. Yourself. Read on. And unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And then you're prepared to go out and teach. That's right. You understand that, right? All right, All good. Praises. Let's go. All praises. Go back. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Mm. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So all the fiery darts of the wicked goes into his schemes, his <laughs> strategies, his devices. And it's never going to be straightforward. I always say, one brother's... Um, 
judgment or problem is everybody's. Okay? Because what affects one will also affect others. Okay? I want you to understand that thing. One brother gets, let's say, gets put out for, let's say, fornication. How do we deal with that brother or sister when they come back? Do we shun them? Do we so the trial wasn't so much them. The trial is on us. Remember, if one of his devices was not doing what? Forgiving. So now that's our trial. Do I forgive? Do I let it go? Or do I hold on to it? And oh, you nasty, evil. Y'all understand that? Can I get one bishop? Yes, sir. Uh, Sirach 8 and 5. <clears throat> based on what Bishop was talking about, because that is a trial for us to make sure we deal right. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin. That goes back to what we read in Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 2. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin. Read on. But remember that we are all worthy of punishment. We always keep that in mind. All right? That's right. All praises. That was excellent. All praises. Where are we at, Yuri? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the now spirit. That, the helmet of, go ahead now, go ahead, read again. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Give me that Hebrew, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. <laughs> and then we're going to get Hebrews 4, 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. Yeah. But let us who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So Paul keeps repeating this, letting us know, getting our mind in its proper perspective. Remember, they were going through persecution, tribulation. Paul was letting them know they were at war, a spiritual war, which turned into physical, because Rome was physically persecuting them. The Jews that worked with Rome was physically persecuting and bringing about tribulation on them. That's what we're trying to pay, prepare every man and woman for. Read again, Yuri. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. The wrath he's talking about is God's wrath. We are not appointed no matter what we go through. What hardships? We are not appointed to God's wrath. Armageddon, that destruction is coming. Go ahead. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And from there, Hebrews 4 and 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So in this battle, in this war, we must learn how to wield the word of God. That's right. Like if you're in a sword fight, you must learn how to parry. Uh, what's the other word? Block and all that. You got to know how to use the sword. So likewise with the word of God. We should not be look, looking at brothers the question is, um, give me a question that they ask on the street. Um, give me something. For God's love the world. Who did God die for? Okay. And you're pulling Hebrews 4 and 12, marriage is honorable. That's not the subject. Right. What'd you say? 13 and 4. Hebrews 13 and 4, thank you. That's not the subject. We got to know how to operate, how to pull the sword, how to use the proper sword for the proper subject matter you see a sodomite in front of you right. you're going over deuteronomy 28 68 that ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work <laughs> y'all understand go back yuri i'm sorry ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god mm -hmm. go ahead. Praying, verse, verse 17 go ahead Verse 18 now. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We got to pray for all saints. Hold that. Watch this. Give me Sirach 4330. Ecclesiasticus 4330. 
Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 43, verse 30. When ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can. We should not have dead prayers. When you're at home, even, because here we have the strong prayers. When you're at home, either by yourself or with your family, if your family is there, pray together. Read again. When ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can. Uh, do it as much as you can. For even yet will he far exceed. The Lord will far exceed. Go ahead. And when you, when you exalt him. And when you exalt him. Put forth all your strength. Put forth all your strength. Don't be. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done. No. Lord don't want to hear that. He went, Oh, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right. That's what the Lord wanted. to put forth all your strength. This is war. And it said the Lord will far ex exceed us. Go back, Yuri. Sir, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. I don't give a damn about the neighbors. Shh, the neighbors, to hell with the neighbors. They're going to hear this prayer. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> praying always with all prayer and supplication mm. in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's right. Go ahead. And for me. And he said, and pray for me. Go ahead. That utterance may be given unto me. And that utterance may be given unto me. We got to open. We got to pray to the Lord. That utterance be open to us to get this gospel out into new doors that have never been opened to us. Read it again, I'm sorry. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So all of us, pray to the Lord that he open doors to us, that we may boldly make known the mystery of the gospel. That's right. Now the mystery of the gospel. Somebody might say, well, what is it? Go back to, go to Ephesians 3, 4. What is the mystery of the gospel? What is that? Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. We're going to read 4 to 6. Yes, sir. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, Go ahead. which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it, na as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Read. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Northern kingdom should be fellow heirs. Go ahead. And of the same body. And of the same body with the southern kingdom of Judah. Go ahead. And partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Right. Now, why does it say as it is? It says, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. Because Christ had not come yet. Christ had not come at that time. When Paul and Peter and them were preaching, that was the time when Christ was on the earth. Everybody, everybody understand and read 6 again. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise. And in, partakers of his promise in who? In Christ by the gospel. That's right. Read. Whereof I was made a minister. Because Christ had come and gone. Christ had come and gone. So that was the time. This is the time. Go ahead. According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. By the effectual working of his power. Let's go back. Where was we at? Verse 19, Ephesians 4. What verse 19 again? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. 6, 19, sorry. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Brothers, understand, when you men are teachers, open your mouth boldly. We should not, I don't know how many of you know uh, Latka Gravis from Taxi. The way he would talk. Nobody want to hear teachers like that. Boring, dead spirit, uninspiring teachers. Read it again. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly mm. to make known the mystery of the gospel. Go ahead. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. We all got to see ourselves as an ambassador. Give me the precept, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Paul said he was an ambassador in bonds. That's Go ahead. Right. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors. It says we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. Read it again. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Mm. As though God did beseech you by us. 
We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So understand that we are ambassadors, ambassadors. Go back. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, mm. that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So now, some of you brothers, some sisters, but I'm focusing on you men, we suffer something that I call battle fatigue. Where does battle, you know battle fatigue is when you're getting tired yeah. in a fight. Yes, sir. Have you ever been in a fist fight? I don't know how many of you have been in a fight on the street. You don't want to be the one getting tired. Because if you get tired and, you, and the other dude got more stamina, oh, you're going to get it. You're going to get stomped out. Everybody understand? Everybody been in a fight before, right? Battle fatigue. Don't go, don't, and don't be on the ground. Unless you know jujitsu. If you know that's something, you could go on the ground. But unless, don't go on the ground. You're done. Read that again. I mean, not read it again. Give me <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon 2. Where does battle fatigue come from? I'm going to give you some roots of it. Wisdom of Solomon 2.24. Let's start there. This is a whole new lesson. I can, but let me just touch on before we close out. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 24. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do, that do hold of his side do find it. I know you said, what is my envy of the devil? Envy of the devil, I'm going to give you the precept. Proverbs 3.31. This is one point that leads to battle fatigue. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Mm. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Sometimes we're in this fight and we start to envy the devil. We start to envy the oppressor. Why can't I live like that? Why can't my life be like his life. The Lord promised us a better life That's in this right. new world to come. But the spirit in you wants to live the life of the oppressor now. And you start to choose his ways. That leads to battle fatigue. Give me the next one. <laughs> Proverbs 12. Point two, the company we keep. So point one was envy. Point two is the company we keep leads to battle fatigue. Proverbs 12, 26. Put it on the screen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. That's some of you, you get tired in a fight. Read that. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. You're more excellent than your neighbor that does not know the truth. Go ahead. But the way of the wicked seduceth them. The company you keep. The company you keep. The way of the wicked will seduce you. That's another point that leads to battle fatigue. Everybody understand that? Ecclesiastes 27, 12. The company we keep. The company we keep is what we will become. The company we keep is what we will become. You sisters hang around with five crackheads, you will be the sixth. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 27, verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. So if you're among the indiscreet at work, observe the time. Get up and go, move from the conversation. So point two, the company we keep leads to battle fatigue. Point three, our secret desires. First John 2, 16, please. Our secret desires. Yeah, put it on the screen. First John chapter. Put it on the screen. It's taking so long. First John. 216. Go ahead. Chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Y'all see that part right there? The lust of the flesh. What we want to feel sexually. That's the lust of the flesh. Go ahead. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes is the things we see. We lust after the things we see. I want that. Get that, get that, get that. Go ahead. And the pride of life. The pride of life is what we want to own. 
what we want to own. So you got the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Go ahead. Is not of the Father. Is not of the Heavenly Father. But is of the world. But is of the world. All these things lead to battle fatigue. All these things we just went over leads to you falling down. Leads to you staying down in this fight. Mark 4, 17. We're almost done. We're almost done. Mark 4, 17. This is what Christ said. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. Mm. And have no root in themselves. By not studying. Go ahead. And so endure but for a time. Some of you men, some of you women will only endure for a time. Go ahead. Afterward. Afterward. When affliction. When or, affliction. Or persecution arises. Or persecution arises. For the word's sake. For the word's sake. You say you're an Israelite, you keep the commandments in Christ. Go ahead. Immediately they are offended. Some of you will get offended and betray the Son of God. Go ahead. And these are they which are sown among thorns. Uh-huh. That's so the company you keep. Sown among thorns is the company you keep. Go ahead. Such as hear the word. You hear the word? And the cares of this world. But the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. That's what we were just discussing. You envy the oppressor. Why can't I live like that now? The deceit. Look, hey, ask P. Diddy about the deceitfulness of riches. All our brothers and sisters, y'all see it. You hear it. Go ahead. The deceitfulness of riches. And the lust of other things. See that? And the lust of other things. It might not be sex. It might not be money. It might be power. Some of you want power. Go ahead. Entering in, choke the word. Chokes the word of God, chokes the commandments. And it becometh unfruitful. And you become unfruitful in this truth. Everybody got that? Psalms 27, 12. Come on, Yuri. Yes, sir. So with that being said, the word of God becomes a fatiguing, fatiguing factor. Yes, like a ball and chain to you. Yes. I can't do what the lust in me wants right. to do. It's warring against, it's warring against your sinful desires. Mm -hmm. That's where the Lord becomes grievous. Right. Exactly. exactly. Hey, get that in Galatians 5, I think it's 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. <laughs> this I say then. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. See that? So that ye cannot do the things that you would. You would like to commit adultery. We grew up doing it. You would like to fornicate. We grew up doing that thing. We like to steal. Some of us grew up doing that thing. But the word of God, the spirit is saying, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Give me Proverbs, I mean Psalms 27, 12, please. Psalms chapter 27, verse 12. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. See that? Go ahead. For false witnesses are risen up against me, uh -huh. and such as breathe out cruelty. I this is the one. What, what verse you at 13? I'm at 13 now. Yes, sir. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. See that fainted right there? That's battle fatigue. Read that verse again. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's why Paul said in Ephesians, having done all to do what, brothers? To stand. Get off! Don't stay down. That's what he's saying. Proverbs 24.10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So if you faint, battle fatigue in the day of adversity, that means the day of your adversity. When your trial comes up, your strength is small. Get up and know where your weakness is. A lot of times these trials we go through is meant to show, reveal us to us. You might think you're strong in the area the Lord's going to show you. No, you're weak in that area. Strengthen that area. Yes, sir, of course. Uh, go to the book of James. We just read this. We just read this earlier today. James 
chapter 1, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. The Bible says count it joy when you fall into temptation. Mm -hmm. Read on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work its patience. Yeah, it's to try your faith, to work your patience. Now watch, we're going to come back here. Jump to verse uh, uh, 12. Verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. But you know, you fall in temptations. But blessed is the man that endureth through them, that does not have battle fatigue, that mm -hmm. does not give up. Read on. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Watch this. Read on. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God didn't tempt you. You know what's tempting you? What's inside of you. He's just, he's just put in front of you to expose to you who you are and what you have to fix. Read on. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Read on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. It says what? I want you to read verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not err. Back to verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So you can learn who you really are. Because everybody talk a good talk. That's right. Until you put in a situation... And God allows you to see you for who you are, but what you have to do is you have to endure through it. You have to overcome it. If not, you'll never find out. Because everybody puts, like you said, you come in, you don't eat pork, okay? You wear fringes, you grow your beard. God said, that's not, I'm, I'm talking about the inner man, the things that nobody know about you but mm -hmm. you and me. Yeah. I'm going to reveal it to you. Let's see what you're going to do. Let's right. see if you love me. Exactly. Now, I'm going to show you another while of the devil. Another, the word while, as we read earlier, cunning stratagem. Cunning strategy. Certain people in this world want to be rich. Here's Esau. I want to get all them into homosexuality. Right. Hmm, how can I do it? They won't do it. They ain't just going to jump into it. Maybe one or two. But the, most of them won't do it. Ah, I know. I'll give them a rap um, contract. Let's see how, how willing they are to make this money. So they say, I want to be a rapper. I'll make all this money. You get in that world. Okay, if you want the big bucks... Now you got to deal with him, right. this man over here in this room. So now they, and they get the more famous ones that everybody, this is strategy. Well, if he's doing it and he's doing it and he's doing it, it might not be that wrong. <laughs> All that is strategy, wiles of the yeah. devil. All the greats have done it. Dad. All the greats have done it. Because you look at this lawsuit coming out. Oh, this one did it, that one, that one, that one, that one. They're like, wow, wow, this one did that one. So then this, all is still strategy. You think, oh, they're just bringing them down. No, no, it's letting you know what's out there. And you can have it too, if you want. If you want to make millions and billions, it's there. Be influential. Look at all these high caliber rap moguls and gangster rappers. Yeah. Everybody's doing it. They dangle that cat right in front of you. And because you don't learn... Well, I didn't mean like... Well, yeah. that, that. <laughs> and because you have not learned to be content with what God has given you in life, mm -hmm. that you're willing to sell your soul for it. And your booty. Remember, remember, and your booty for it. Remember the scripture says, the Lord said, learn to be content in this life. But because of that, because of the lust of the eyes, because of the covetousness that you want... You're willing to sell your soul and your backside mm -hmm. for riches. And after you get it, then what? Now you're going to usher in the next generation. Mm -hmm. you're gonna, you, it's done to you. Hurt people, hurt people. Yep. And then you do the next one. And then they go to cycle. Exactly. Not us, right, men? Oh, but, shoot. But you <laughs> Oh, wait a second. Not us, right, men? <laughs> but think about how those wilds work. Well, Bishop was like, uh, you guys figure it out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Think about how those wiles work, because at the end of the at the end of it, when you got to sell your give your butt up to get such and such, at the very beginning, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't think that way, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they a little bit, a little bit of the bending, a little bit of the bending. You because like you say, you wonder how all these people end up that way. Because mm -hmm. if you would have met them many years ago, they'd be man, hell no, I never do. Nah, blah 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 blah. But a little bit 
a little bit of wearing your you a little bit of you being fatigued by the commandments right brings you a little bit closer and closer to you full blown gone mm -hmm. exactly hey give me second we almost done second Corinthians eleven I mean three and three and six second Corinthians wait, 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 wait. yes second Corinthians chapter three verse six. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. We are able ministers. That's what you brothers and sisters being trained for. We are able ministers of the New Testament, meaning of Christ. Everybody understand that? Jump to chapter 4, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we are... What is this ministry? It's going back to the New Testament in Christ. Everybody understand that, right? <laughs> Read again. Therefore... Seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not. Do not go through battle fatigue. Do not faint in this truth. Everybody understand that? Read on. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, mm -hmm. not walking in craftiness, nor, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation stop, of... Stop. I'm going to show you something. See that part? but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Let me show you this video. Put it on the screen. This is an example of Christians handling the word of God deceitfully. Listen to this. I want to show you how much culture has came into the church today. I want you to listen to this preacher and his sermon, and then I want you to hear the pastor who invited this preacher. I want you to hear his Turn it off! What if God worships me? What? Can you say that with me? What if God worships me? Worship has become so God-centered that it risks the subjective colliding of our own things, our biases, etc. We declare that you are God that worships us. That's how much you love us. That's how much you desire us. That's how much you are for us. He said, wouldn't we all want to, don't we all want to tell God you need to worship me? Hell no. That exactly. is not what I'm telling God. So you see what's creeped into the church. Homosexuality, effeminate men, and they're saying God worships us. Wow. This is what's going on in this day and age. So read that again. Verse but, 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, mm -hmm. but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Watch this. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If you can't get it, you can't understand that where the Israelites Christ died for us, the 12 tribes of Israel, then you're lost. Go ahead. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them. The white man has blinded the minds of them. Go ahead. Blinded the minds of them which believe not. Because the white man is the God of this world. Satan operates through him. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Read. For we preach not ourselves. This ain't about me, 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 me. We don't preach ourselves. This ain't about us glorifying us. Read. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. That's who we're to preach. That's who we're to lead the men and women to of our people. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Go ahead. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. Read. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now jump down, jump down, just for time's sakes. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not. Having learned this truth, we don't suffer battle fatigue. We don't faint in this truth. We, but though our outward man perish, mm -hmm. yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Though our outward flesh perish, the inner man goes strong day by day. Read it again. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Read. For our light affliction. Do you hear what it's saying? Our light affliction. So persecution, trials, tribulation is calling a light affliction. Read that again, Yuri. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You see what he's saying? Light affliction is only for a moment. Go ahead. 
worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What we're going to receive after can't even be compared. That's what he's saying. That's right. Go ahead. While we look not at the things which are seen. We don't look at the things that are seen in this world. Go ahead. But at the things which are not seen. The things which are not seen is what is prophesied in this Bible for us. Go ahead. For the things which are seen are temporal. The things that we see here in America, Europe, worldwide is temporary. Go ahead. But the things which are not seen. The things which are not seen, the prophecies that are written. Go ahead. Are eternal. Yeah, does everybody understand that? Give me Isaiah 40. We're going to close out with this one. Isaiah 40, 29. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. Yeah, we get tired, but we don't give up. That's why I said that having done all to stand, we don't give up. So it says what, Yuri? He giveth power to the faint. It says he giveth power to the faint. That's us. He's going to give us power. Go ahead. And to them that have no might. Hey, can I get a little drum music there? Read it again. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Hear what he says. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Go ahead. Even the youth. Even the youth. Shall faint and be weary. Shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But watch this. But they that wait upon the Lord. But they, that's you and me, that wait upon the Lord. Shall renew their strength. We're going to renew our strength, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. They shall mount up with wings. As eagles. We're going to mount up our wings as eagles. That means we're going to fly. We're going to fly high. Go ahead. They shall run. We shall run. And not be weary. And not be weary. And they shall walk. We shall walk. And not faint. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. And with that, we say shalom. All praises, all praises to the Lord, all praises brothers, sisters, all praises to the Lord, all praises. All praises. All praises to the Most High. That was definitely all the praise. Spirit. I know a lot of people needed to hear that. I know it might have appeared that the class has taken a turn because I know we were talking about Putin, but all of that goes with it. That that all of that goes with mm -hmm. it. That's right. You know, you had a preacher that would say this lesson is going out for somebody. That, you know how to be like, but this really went out to a lot of people. Oh please! And I know we needed it. And that I, was I needed crazy. it. Yeah, help me. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Believe me, I was taking mental notes on some things. You know, so. That's something that we can definitely need. The Lord definitely was on you to bring this out, Bishop. All praise. A lot of people's spirits were. Oh, all praise. praise. All praise. So, all praise to the Most High. This is uh, this is what we call Bishop. This is what we call food for the soul. Food for the soul. Hey, we got. Uh, before we break bread, I want to thank uh, Bishop Yawsap for coming through. All praise to Most High. It's always an honor. It's always good to see Bishop Yawasap. Bishop Kanai, thank you. It's good. It's always good to see Bishop Kanai. All praise to Mosai. We got uh, Deacon Abiel. Thank you for coming through. We got Deacon Malakai right here. Uh, we got Deacon Isaac over there. All praise to Mosai. All boys to Mosai. A lot of people showed up this weekend. Huh? I said a lot of a lot of people showed up this weekend. Yes, a lot of people show up. All boys to Mosai. All boys to Mosai. And we got a lot of captain in the house. We want to thank all your captains for coming through. All you officers for coming through. Right. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome back home. All boys. All boys. All boys. All boys. Hey, what help is you know the battle fatigue. When you are wrong, your brothers, and you're going through scriptures, that drive away that battle fatigue, man. That's right. You know, so that's why scripture says it's good when brothers come together in unity. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when you come around, brothers, somebody going to say something that going to make you, that going to re re rejuvenate your spirit. <laughs> okay, that's why the Lord says it's good when we come together 
in one spirit, man. So all praises to the most high. <laughs> you know, all praises to the most high. Good class, Bishop. Good all praises. All praises. All oh, praise. Uh, hey, Cap, we got the announcement. Check, check. I got it, Deke. Oh, you got it? Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead Cap. All right, Israel. Let's give the Lord a round of applause, man. <laughs> Spirit of Christ working through the bishop. All right, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Community cleanup. Let's get that community cleanup um, first. Community cleanup. Yeah, I'm going to Orlando. Y'all been a big help, man. Came out and cleaned up the inside and outside, as you can see. You know, all the trash that we put in, accumulated, and we have more brothers and stuff. Still back. Start that again. Rewind and start it again. Start it again. Y'all been a big help, man. Came out and cleaned up the inside and outside, as you can see. You know, all the trash that we put in, accumulated, and we have more brothers and stuff. Still back. Let's go. Stand behind us, protect you. Stand beside us, respect you. But if you stand in the way, then you go with the day when we have to dissect you. Rain, fire, upon a tempter. How to take the temperature. The promise is back. Can they back? Blah, 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 blah. You hear that gun is lightning, go check on the weatherman. I'm just saying, can't think of a better plan than obeying the lamb. Anything else is a scam. New Bruce will get shot in this one time. It's a seal that purple, no short line. Cause we breaking the mold and changing the game. We're zero and we're just playing, playing, playing. Okay, look. Let me go ahead and exit out the document. You go ahead and do it. Oh, praise to the most high. IUIC Orlando partnered with a local youth center and a community outreach, No Violent Zone. The community was invited to join the clean as the men and women of the Lord continue to restore hope in our destitute nation. All praise to the most high. Shout out to IUIC Orlando. All praise. All right, let's go to the next one. Blitz or camp events. Y'all should see the announcement layout on the group. Hey, Shalom family, Most High Christ bless you. Bishop Kandai, we're here south by southwest in Austin, Texas. The streets are full of people. We have some listen, some reject them, but guess what? The word of God is going out. Praise to the Most High. Give him a round of applause. All praise to the Most High. IUIC Austin led the charge at South by Southwest. The prophets ignited Sixth Street with fervent teachings, reclaiming lost souls amidst chaos, casting a beacon of hope. Their mission to spark a transformation that will resonate with the downtrodden masses. All praises. One of the things we talked about today in the youth prevention is how to channel your emotions, how to redirect that emotion to something positive. The things they talked about was like heart touching because I lost my cousin and I was there. I seen him lose his life and I was like, wow. You know, other people, you know, actually understand and stuff. So I was shocked. I would love to see these guys come back again. I think the kids would like that too. And I love the participation that some of them were having. As a parent, I listen to the music that my children listen to so that we can have conversations about those lyrics. 
When the lyrics are about violence, we can talk about alternatives to violence. Hey, Shalom, Israel. Most High and Christ Bless. I'm Captain Joy. I'm here with... Officer Kinez, a minute, Dad. All praises. Also, I'm here with Officer Baja, Officer Obidaya. And we did an excellent presentation today at Bridgegate Community School. The teacher, the principal, the dean, everybody was present. We also have guest speakers talk to the students and give the side as well. All praise the most I got for this opportunity. He has blessed us with here in Columbus, Ohio. Lost where we can do more. Most high and Chris bless. Shalom. All praise to the most high. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Captain Joel, IUIC, Columbus. All praise to the most high. Came together for a youth violence and conflict resolution seminar. And as you can see, the people were captivated. All praises. Right now at 10, witnesses helped KBRCT paint a picture of what happened at a restaurant. What solutions do you believe that the black and Hispanic communities need to apply to relieve ourselves of youth violence? We have organizations like you know, your organization on the ground to help mobilize people to actually deal with the lack of attention, then that'll get them stimulated enough to really be um, champions of peace. Come back to learn how to love one another, because if you love one another, if I have an art with my brother or my sister, I'm not going to take a gun. I'm not going to take a knife. I'm not trying to take the life. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to talk, and we're going to reason together. Uh, what did you learn that you can apply to your life? Most likely the forgiveness part. I feel like a lot of people struggle with that. I know I do myself. I feel like instead of resorting to things that can end up in somebody getting hurt or simply dying, sadly, Maybe I could think twice and just think better about it. Maybe I could reflect on myself. Right. Shalom, shalom. Most of the best, Captain Leon. Hey, we're here in Houston, Texas, at the first youth violence and conflict resolution event. It turned out a success. All praise to the Most High. Everything went well. The brothers and sisters that was here, the youth that was here, received the message to change their mind and start to change our community. Very, very successful event. Uh, they loved everything that we did. They participated with the crowd participation. So we're looking to take this to other neighborhoods as well around and surrounding cities within Houston. All praises to the most high. IUIC Houston hosted the first annual Youth Violence and Conflict Resolution Seminar. We invited multiple guests from the city of Houston to push awareness and most of all solutions to help combat the violence that plagues our communities. All praises to the most high. All right. So how many of y'all ready to shake off that battle fatigue? Is you ready? Come on, man. Get that spirit up off you. Let's go. Come on. Two, three. Shalom Israel, most signed Christ, bless him, Captain Yadaya, here with Officer Joe, I'm here with Officer Davi. We just had the Youth Violence Conflict Resolution Seminar. All praises to the Most High, the Lord got the victory. We had the mayor come out, all praise to the Lord. It was great interaction with the children. They had to learn, problem solve, and be able to have critical thinking skills and, and see different skits and see different programs that we put in place so they could learn how to maneuver any different solutions. So it was an excellent, the event was a success. Great planning, great detail. These brothers out here are in the spirit. They got to keep it up. All praise to the Lord. I pray y'all enjoyed the uh, film and the documentary. Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. All praise to IUIC Milwaukee with the help of Captain Yadaya comes together to bring awareness to the violence and hatred in the black community. Many souls were edified and receptive. Continue to support as IUIC Milwaukee fights for the souls of our youth. Hey, you, let me tell you something, right? You see these, these youth violent we're doing? This thing we go to these places, talk against. A lot of you don't see the big, the big picture behind it. A lot of you cannot see it. Mm. This is huge. This is huge. I'm telling you, our people, this is why you most are going to use this to make our people repent, believe it or not. Especially right. the young men. Remember, we always, Bishop always said, all these violent killing, the gangs, 
the Israel are going to change that? This is, this is part of changing that, man. You see that young man said earlier, the hardest part is the forgiveness. Right now, you probably cannot see the big picture. I'm telling you, this right here is big. It's big. All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. Hey, before we move on to the Passover announcements, pull up the um, Follow the Youth Violence and Conflict Resolution Seminars uh, Instagram page. Put that up. So we got an Instagram page, y'all, for it to help promote um, everything that we're trying to do. Let's put that up. Leave it up there for about 15 seconds. All right? So take out your phone. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Help us push this thing. All right? The Youth Violence Conflict Resolution Seminar is taking the country by storm. Follow our Instagram page. All right? A lot of great work's being, being done, y'all. A lot of doors being opened up. All praises. Hold on, hold on. Keep it up there. All praise, y'all. You can drop. All right, let's move on. All praise. Come on. Let's pull that up. Passover 2024. Come on, man. Never forget. Most High brought plagues on the Egyptians That's right. for enslaving his chosen people. And we're going to celebrate it every single year until Christ returns, all right? This year's from April 8th at sundown to April 14th at sundown. So get ready. Get the leaven out your house and the leaven out your hearts. Prepare ourselves for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. Hey, hey, Israel, I want you all to um, remember, too, this year... We're doing Passover every school. We're not doing it big like how we do it every year. You all remember the, the covenant we made last, last Passover and the reason why we're doing it the way we're doing it this year, right? Or you all forgot? Well, well, why, what is the reason each school is keeping Passover in their perspective location and we ain't coming together and do some big and crazy 10, 20,000 of us coming together? Why we ain't doing it that way? Because of what? So, how much of you all already gave donation this year towards that? Okay, so those of you all online, don't forget that's the reason we want to we want to get our land, we want to get our own land, and that's we want to build right. a big establishment that could hold fifty thousand people. You understand? You know, we wanna we wanna go to different levels, but we need to work together to get it done. We need to make sacrifice. So we made that sacrifice. You know, instead of coming together and getting it in and partying with all of you all and stuff like that and enjoying the feast all together, we say, all right, we're going to make a sacrifice for a couple of years and try to save that money. Okay? So, you all don't forget the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. So, make sure you all, you all remember that covenant and put that money where it's supposed to go. You know what I mean? So, where do we send it to? Where, where's, the, where's the link so people can donate? Y'all got the book. land link? You got the land link? Pull it up, Bridget. That's a good point to remind them the whole reason we're doing it. So when you find a land link, just post it. Put it up so people can see it. So, Bishop, ain't nobody going to tell us to go home? Once we got this, can't, oh. nobody, can't nobody tell us to leave? Yeah. It's there oh, later we want to. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Tired of, let me stop. Yes, sir. <laughs> Send funds via PayPal to Israel at IsraelUnite.org. Make sure to put land in the comment section. Come on, Israel. Donate! How many people we got watching online right now? 10,000? Yeah. Come on. Hey, but, hey, but the, let me show you all some. You all know that our enemies, they watching us, they clucking us like chickens, you understand? Everything we do, they following. And what you all do understand is when we go to rent these places, a lot of time we are shut down because we are, is, because of, because we are Israel united in Christ. Right. Okay, because... The devil put us on Southern Poverty Law and said we're the most dangerous people in America, the third most dangerous people in America. Okay, so they are stopping us. We can't even come together and feast together. Okay, they're trying to stop us from renting establishments and so forth. So that's why we got to get this thing done. I hope you all, you all see the mission why we said what we said last year. Okay, we ain't got to depend on the devil. We depend on ourselves. That's yes, right. Sir. All praise Israel. 
Look at that. America's largest hate groups, number three. Mm. This to show you how just to show you how backwards that is, we just got through showing what we're doing in the communities with the youth violence conflict conflict resolution seminar. And that's about saving lives. Well, you got people of other nations seeing the benefit of it, and then they want to tarnish us, say that we're a hate group. You don't see the KKK trying to stop people from from uh, from killing each other. They're doing the killing the damn selves. Right. But yet, they're number 20, and we're number three. <laughs> so, there you go. All right, family. Let's move on. What we got next? All right. Let's pull up the QR code. All right, Israel, shalom, most high Christ bless you all. We're seeking your assistance and to enhance our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions. Thank you for your time. Leave it up there for a few. So if you hadn't done it, do it. It's going to help us improve our broadcast. I told y'all, man, some of y'all playing. We ain't playing. Israel United Christ trying to take over the world, man. Through the word of God. So we need your help. We're trying to enhance ourselves, all right? Try to get better. All right. What's next? All praise to the Most High. The annual IUIC Men's Conference is here. The early bird special will end soon. Register now, August 2024 on the West Coast. That's right. It's wartime, brothers. Yes, sir. It's going to be huge. Yes, sir. Hey, y'all men going to be there, right? You're going to make the sacrifice right now, right? Go ahead and let your job know what it is. You know, bro, don't wait till the last minute. You know how some of you brothers do. Wait till the day before to ask your boss. Do it now. <laughs> Start saving your money right now. Get ready. Hey, you don't want to miss this. It's always the same event for a minute. It's always the same brothers every year. Oh, I got to stay back to hold up school. I got to stay back to hold down the school. Every year, brother? How are you a part of an army, but you don't even go meet? with? Didn't King David bring all the captains and the officers? They all came together, didn't he? You ain't never read that scripture? Go read 1 Samuel. All right? One brand new wide Oh, damn. Cap, 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 you ain't had to cut up like that. You got to say that. Don't get mad at me. You say, oh, they want to bring their wife. That's why they don't come. Damn, they want to bring their wife to the men's conference. Damn. Damn. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's move. let's move on, brothers. So normally, oh, go ahead, Bishop. I want, normally when, uh, when, when the captain is speaking, you would turn the camera on to him and let the people see who's speaking. Just says announcement, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Battle fatigue. Damn, it's time. Let's Let's time. Israel, Bishop Nathaniel. Some of you call me the general, and I appreciate that. The gospel hasn't been preached everywhere as yet. There's much work to be done. As we know, the 12 tribes of Israel, like James 1 and 1 said, were scattered. Throughout all nations. I need some volunteers. I need some of you mighty men to stand up. You deacons, captains, officers, soldiers, stand up. I need volunteers to go on this mission. All praise to the Most High. IUIC Worldwide. Isaiah 1111 Ministries. Subscribe now to IUIC Diaspora and IUIC Levant on all social media platforms to help push the word of God in the Levant and all other countries. We have been scattered 12 tribes. Worldwide. All praise to the most high. Let's move on. All right. Prophecies are coming to fruition and becoming current event. 
The scattered sheep of Israel must come unto repentance. We need everyone to subscribe to IUIC Ethiopia and Eritrea on YouTube. All right, y'all, help us get this word out. Come on. We have more art than Demina. Yes. We have more art than Demina. The show, Mosaic, I said, follow IYC. Follow IYC. We are walking up to them, feel them, be a big chap in them head in our ears. Follow IYC, Trinidad, and Tobago. That's right. Like when they ask their tracks, do I cast up? Follow IYC, Trinidad, and Tobago. Two vests, who I violate that. Hey, I'm a professor Michael, IUICTT. The Pasha cannot answer these questions. Like, subscribe, and follow IUIC Trinidad and Tobago. Shalom. That's right. Hey, give it up, man. Give it up. Like, follow, and subscribe to IUIC Trinidad and Tobago on all social media platforms as we continue encouraging our brothers and sisters in the Twin Isles to repent and follow after the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. Hey, hey, big up brothers and sisters over there in Trinidad and Tobago. You don't know. You already know. <laughs> That's the Lana man, um, Bert. You understand? So, yo, you all get, you all get a big profit over here in Babylon putting in work too. You all done. That's, so, That's you right. You keep up the good work, man, out there. Okay? That's Shalom. right. Yeah, to you niggas, you can't stop nothing. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I'm sorry, Bishop. I'm sorry, Bishop. <laughs> Keep on working out there. All praise to the most high. What we got next? Subscribe, brothers. Subscribe, sisters. Come on. All right. Booster Club. Booster Club. Mission is now. Live right now. All Booster Club members check the telegram and respond to the mission. Y'all do know we doing work worldwide, right? We need your help, man. Join, donate. Some of you can't come to the school. Some of you can't, you know, you can't do certain things, but you can always donate. Come on, you donate to, some of y'all was donating to the, uh, to Israel back in the, Israelis back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Christians for Israel, Kufi, whatever they call it. Y'all was doing that. So come on, we need y'all to donate to this mission so we can take this planet over. All right? IUIC, where's it? IUIC.fundraising at IsraelUnite.org. Send your money there. What's next, brethren? All right. Let me see where we at. Royalty Films. Royalty Films. Now, listen, we got a lot of different things we're doing. We got the music. We got the movies coming out. Brothers and sisters, we need y'all help. We need y'all to go visit royaltyfilms.com. We need you to help us donate. How many of y'all like Joseph Dream? Come on, man. The hell is this? How many of y'all, how many of you have seen Curse of Miriam yet? Okay, some people have seen that too. Not many. Oh, Lord, sister start scratching their ear. You know when somebody starts scratching their ear, they mean they ain't did it. We need y'all to get out here and get ready, all right? It's coming. It's coming, all right? Donate. What else we got? Here we go. Expectations for the film is to leave with us a visual. Cut it up, man. Start it over. Start it over. Cut it up, y'all. Come on. My expectations for the film is to leave with us a visual imprint on why we need to continue to make more films like what you see coming out of IUIC. Joseph's Dream was, a, was, was another good example. It gives, it gives the visual imagery 
That's very important. We, we must be able to see things in our mind before we can act upon it. So what these films do, it actually puts a vision in our mind and it gives us something to step towards rather than somebody just quote unquote telling the story. Now we got visual aid that helps us in, in our tenacious drive towards the truth of the Bible. And that's good for our children as well. Jeez. Wake up. All praise to the most high. Royalty Films. Come on, Israel. Give it up. Give it up. Royalty Films hosted his second screening of the Curse of Miriam and received a standing ovation in Orlando, Florida. Hey, look, pull that up right now. Follow the Curse of Miriam on Instagram. All right, help us get this word out. Our people need this biblical imagery, y'all. Tired of seeing white folks play us, man. We the people of God. So make sure y'all follow. Right now. All right, Israel, what we got? Okay, please reach out. You got it on the screen? All right, please reach out to your local IT lead for the link to sign up for the Little Lights Casting Call. All right, so make sure, reach out to your IT lead. All right, help us get the word out so we can continue to get these things built up. All right, we got a lot of stuff we're doing, y'all. A lot of stuff we're doing. Hey, so uh, how did y'all meet? You talking to me? Ye yeah. Okay. You talking about me and Taylor? That's a long story. NYC LA presents to you the man of the hour, Officer. of the Lord and everyone here, we pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss your bride. Bringing unity with men and women of understanding. So Onias, you are a man of God. You are a man of understanding. Congratulations. May the Most High God bless both of you. Bring back some prophet. Most High in Christ bless. That's right. <laughs> Come on, Israel. Give it up. Give it up. Congratulations to the house of Officer Onias. Marriage is honorable. Hey, you know the feminists hate to see the man walk down the aisle. You know that's how I spoke. You know we the prize, don't you, brothers? Y'all know we the prize, don't you, sisters? That's right. Uh-huh, yeah. You see how yeah, you see that? Now you see that, don't you? You saw that, didn't you, Bishop? Come on, man. Get in the spirit, sisters. All right. <laughs> Virtuous woman, for her prices fall above rubies. Call me Judith, call me Sarah, call me Leah, call me Esther. Well, I know you have no electricity, so I have to use what nature oh, provided for us. <laughs> so here I am using my pumpkin. Pump leaf, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Call me Sarah, call me Leah, call me Esther, call me Deborah. Cause in this one I Ye are the salt of the earth. The nation of Israel is the salt of the This is not a sad moment. It may seem sad to us, but the most I know. God sustained her to the end. She kept the commandments. She endured and she kept fighting. Promise, put it in work. Helping our brothers and helping the church. Put it in work. Helping our sisters come out of the dirt. The other nations, they trying to do what we do. All praise of the Most High. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, our beloved sister Miriam, 
Israel was laid to rest. She endured until the end. Now she's re she's pre present with the Lord. We know we'll see our sister again. She loved the song Israelite Woman. And at her request, it was played in remembrance of her. All praise to the Most High, man. See our sister again. All praise. All praise to the Most High. Our forefathers roamed in the wilderness for 40 years for being disobedient to the Most High God and murmuring against Him. Premiering tonight on Original Royalty Recordings, the fourth video release, The Roaming, featuring Eno Sakur from the studio album, The Curse of Miriam Soundtrack, available exclusively tonight on OriginalRoyalty.com. All proceeds will be donated to the next Original Royalty film. All praise Curse of Miriam soundtrack. All praise to the Lord. Make sure y'all go get that thing ASAP. New original royalty recording artist merchandise available at originalroyalty.com. Pull that thing up. All artists you can get all of the merch. All right. And I think we got one last announcement. All right, Israel. Hey, listen. Put your hands together, man. Put your hands together. The debut album from Bishop Kanai, a.k.a. The Pin, is now available for purchase on OriginalRoyalty.com, coming soon to all streaming platforms. Bishop, is it out? Is it out, Bishop? Yeah. Absolutely. Go to Original Royalty Music. You can pick it up right now. All praise. So that will conclude our announcements. All praise to the most high. Is, are you ready to break bread, leadership? All right, I'll see you. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Savior, in Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's get a Lord and round of applause for the fire class from Bishop Nathaniels. Giving all praise. We got three bishops in the building. Rise up on your feet. Give a Lord a round of applause. We in That's this right. Building. Sisters, come on, stand up, sisters. Put some respect. 
Right, they out the spirit. They are all the way out the spirit. Hey, the Lord said we're going to have eagle wings. We're going to fly. All praise. Let's bring the building down, brothers. Men of Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. What time is it? Time. What time is it? Time. Who's the king? Black. Who's the king? Black. What color is he? Black. What color is he? Black. Who are we? Who are we? Twelve tribes. Worldwide. Twelve tribes. Worldwide. Unity. 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 Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Faith, patient, salvation. Faith, patient, salvation. Now finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what?